recording on this computer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second numerology call <laughs> in Leanne's private Facebook group. Um, Jeanette Hill is our numerologist today. She's a close friend of mine. She's also a fellow medium. She is uh, an intuitive um, life coach, soul coach, all that kind of stuff coach. And um, I haven't gotten your title down just yet, but uh, she's, she's great at what she does. She, she, um, between the mediumship, between the numerology, the intuitive hits, the guidance and the direction that she gives, she's, she's really fabulous. So um, uh, we are going to be doing an, our second numerology call today. We did our first one. That one has been recorded and it is in the private group um, for, for your viewing pleasure. If you miss that and you want to you find out what your numbers are from that. Because what I'm learning from Jeanette is, is that numerology builds on, on each other. Like, you know, the first call was kind of foundational. That gives you foundational numbers. And then she starts going in more, more in depth into other numbers in your chart that helps to really kind of expand, you know, your, um, your awareness of yourself. And it's very fascinating. So uh, today is April 7th. April 7th. Whoa. Did you guys hear that? Just blew out my eardrum. Teresa White, nice to have you. I'm going to mute you. Okay, sorry. Um, today is April 7, 2018. We are doing our second call, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. London time. It's fabulous to have everybody here. And I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to take it away. I'm going to give it away to Jeanette. I'm going to do, rest a little bit with my tea. So, Jeanette, nice to see you. Good to see you, Leanne. Thank you for letting me do this with you guys today. I'm going to just do the sh screen share here. Okay. Slide. Share the screen. All righty. So can you guys see, since I can't tell, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. If anybody else can't, if you can, put your thumb up. You know, if you can't, you should be able to, yeah. Darlene and Bailey can, Teresa okay. can, that's good. So it should be good. So for those of you that didn't um, hear the first recording or get a chance to learn anything about numerology, first of all, my name's Jeanette. Thanks for the introduction. Leanne and I have met Leanne and I have mediumship um, classes before. And numerology is based on your birth name and your birth date and so in the last call we did a real introduction to numerology which was based on uh your birth date your life path number where you add up your month your day and your year and when you add up those numbers you get your life path number so if you have a chance to go back and listen to that call and recording i go over all of that and that life path number in numerology is the most important number in your chart okay that shows the road ahead that shows a lot of your talents and a lot of your abilities that you have and some lessons that you have it's like your soul's particular and numerology i think i can hear a little bit of background noise i don't know who that is oh it's stephanie no it's not stand by i've muted it Oh, I think Cheryl. Okay, we got it. Um, the thing I like about numerology is if you don't know your birth time and you want to know a little bit more about yourself, you just need your birth name and your birth date. So I'm not going to go over too much of the introductory stuff since that is in the first recording. This one is going to be um, really more about, like I said, a deeper dive into you. And what happens in numerology is it's it's the idea that your soul, a lot like with astrology, wanted certain qualities or certain lessons in this lifetime. And so your name and your birth date, they carry a vibration or an energy that shows personality tendencies and soul talents and potentials. Okay. Now, if you have a shortened name, or you maybe have a married name, that brings additional influences, okay? But it's your full birth name and your birth date that's gonna show the most major influence in your life, okay? So some of you um, to do this may want to have, and it's fine to get up, you might wanna have pen and paper because it will help you calculate some of the things that we're gonna do. If you don't want, you just wanna listen, that's fine too. 
So one of the things I do when I do a numerology chart is I look at all of the numbers in your chart. And what we're going to do today, like the first call we looked at the life path number, we're going to look at the most important numbers in your chart, which is your uh, maturity number, your expression number, and your heart's desire number. And before, like I said, we looked at the life path number, which is the most important number. When you look at all the numbers together, it's similar in like astrology. If you only looked at the sun sign, you'd get a really limited perspective of somebody. So, so just like with astrology, where you look at the rising sign and the moon sign and all of that, in numerology, you want to look at more than just the life path number. Okay. And so some numbers are going to be compatible. Some numbers might be a little bit more in conflict. And anytime you see more than one number in someone's chart or you see a master number, those are really significant influences, okay? Now, as I'm talking, start thinking about not just your life path number, but think about too, like what's the date of my birthday? So like I'm October 2nd, so I'm an 11-2 life path number but I'm also born on the second. And as you calculate some of these numbers, just keep aware that when we're talking about all these different numbers, you might notice some of these things because your birthday number is one of these numbers, okay? So let's go on to the next. Oh, now my computer's deciding to, okay. So another thing we can do when we look at numbers is you can look at your numbers next to other people, like your kids, maybe your partner, spouse, friends. You can see some compatibility sometimes, and sometimes you can see some challenges. So I'm just going to give like a little very brief overview of some of these numbers, and we're going to move right into calculating um, like your expression number, okay? So if we look at 2, 11, 2, 22, 4, 33, 6, and 7. Okay, these numbers are very intuitive, psychic, and spiritual, okay? Um, and again, this is generally, generally. There's always exceptions. The two and the six, like I mentioned before, tend to be giving and caring numbers. They tend to be numbers that people have a sense of aesthetic and beauty. The five is very significant in numerology because the five is all about change and promotion, variety, freedom, okay? The seven's all about being the specialist, the researcher. It's also highly intuitive, it needs time alone. Okay, I'll go on to the next slide here. Four and eight, they're kind of business oriented. They're very practical. Um, four and eight numbers tend to be good in management. They tend to be work or career focused, okay? Three, six, and nine, those tend to be very creative and artistic and emotional. Then if you look down here at one, four, eight, and nine, those numbers often wanna be a leader. They wanna be in charge. They tend to be very powerful numbers. And then the last numbers I have down here are nine, 11, 22, and 33. Those 11, 22, and 33 are master numbers. These numbers are visionary, humanitarian, inspirational. Okay, so those are just some things to keep in mind about some overall tendencies for some of these groupings of numbers. Okay, so here I'm gonna pause a moment. Now, if you have pen and paper and you wanna calculate this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your full name and write it out, okay? Now, when we get to some q and I can also calculate it um, on my software program and it'll just take a minute or two. But here's all of the numbers, okay? So you'll see the numbers one through nine. Every letter in the alphabet has a number attributed to it, okay? And you'll see here that a Y is a vowel when it's preceded by a consonant, okay? So like my son's name is Henry. Because the Y is preceded by a consonant, that Y becomes a vowel, okay? And that'll become significant in a little bit. So the one numbers are A, J, and S, you know, the two are B, K, and T. So if you write out your name right now, you can start seeing that your letters and your name have different numbers, okay? Do you want them to write out just their first name or their entire name? You have to write out your whole name for what we're gonna to do today. Okay, so first, middle, and last name. And then for people who are married, do they do their a maiden name? Um, the name that you were born with, like as it is on your birth certificate. So, 
I never changed my name, but some people have. So let's say, like my mother-in-law's name is Marion May Magnuson, but she goes by Marion Page. So for today, we're gonna go by the name that you're born with, okay? okay? And when you write your name out, look at each number and you can look up at this chart and you can say, well, for instance, my name is Jeanette, the first letter J is gonna be a one, okay? The, le the next letter E is gonna be a five. The next letter A is gonna be a one. So what I recommend is underneath each letter you write the number, okay? Write the numbers down. And as you do that, and once you've written all your numbers down for all your letters, then you're gonna add up those numbers. But I'm gonna pause a moment because I'm gonna let you guys have an opportunity to write your numbers down for your letters. And don't worry about junior or senior if you have that. Don't include that. If you go by an initial, you want to write out the whole name. So some people don't go by their first name, but you want to write that out. And just let me know when you're done, like a thumbs up, or if you, thumbs up, okay. Any other thumbs up? Okay, you guys are ready to move on. So this will be in the recording. You'll have this, and a lot of times you can Google this stuff online too, but this will be the screen, you should see the screen again if you need to. And I know the numbers in my head. I know the letters and numbers in my head. So if you have a question um, and Leanne can moderate, I can always tell you off the top of my head. Um, but I'll move on to the next slide, okay? So the first thing we're going to calculate is your expression number, okay? So if you've added up all of those numbers for your full birth name, you should get one number, okay? If you get an 11 or a 22 or a 33, don't reduce those numbers. Keep it as 11, 22, 33. So if you got like an 11 or a 29, um, keep those numbers, the 29 will become an 11, okay? So what happens is the expression number is based on your full name. And it shows at birth, okay? It shows your talents and your abilities. It's a lifelong goal. It's like your destiny or your potential. And when someone has me do their chart, I always wanna see their expression number because a lot of times it'll indicate career potential, okay? Now, Leanne, you said I can mention some of your numbers? Yep. So Leanne's expression number is a five. And if you look at the five, the five is about travel, adventure, change, but the five has a lot of verbal ability. So it's no surprise to me that Leanne's a writer, okay? Three is a number, another uh, number that has a lot of verbal ability. Now, if you've adopted, and you may not have time today, but if you're adopted later on, you can look at your adopted name and your birth name. Now, I happen to be adopted, okay? What happens is if you've had a situation like that, your adopted name and your birth name will both influence you. 
And I think it's more significant than people that have had name changes due to marriage, because what's happened is my expression number is the same, both for my original name and my adoptive name. But because I was adopted when I was a baby, my adopted name that I've had since I was like a year old, I feel has the most influence over me. Does this make sense? Now, some numerology books will say, oh, just go with the name you are given and not your adopted name. I think that's a case-by-case -case basis, and I doubt a lot of these authors were adopted. Since I was adopted, I can tell that my adopted name has had the most influence on me because I've had it since I was a baby. So I would say you need to take me on a case-by-case -case basis, and you can decide what has had the most influence on you, okay? So what happens next is, oops, sorry, I went backwards instead of forwards. We're going to go over some of these different expression numbers, okay, um, briefly. We're not going to go to spend too long. You can kind of see the list, right? The one is independent. It's the leader. Now, sometimes people say, I don't feel like a leader. Well. If you don't feel like a leader, you're definitely going to feel like if you have a one expression, I want to be in charge of myself. You're likely not going to like to be told what to do. You're probably very individualistic, very much um, an independent person. Okay, You may not necessarily love being part of groups. You may not necessarily want to be somebody who's doing what everybody else is doing. You're the individual. And what I listed, again, there's all sorts of occupations that could fall under the one. But the one is not going to be happy having somebody micromanage them in work. Okay? It doesn't really matter what you do. You need to at least be in charge of yourself. With the two expression, we have a lot more sensitivity and a lot more attention to detail, um, like I mentioned before, the aesthetics, the caring, the giving. You might have somebody who wants to be a nurse or somebody who wants to be a counselor. Um, again, I mentioned some different potential occupations. It could be any occupation, but the two is going to have that warmth, that sensitivity, that kindness. And it's not going to, to necessarily be doing everything on its own because the two likes cooperation or partnership or teamwork okay or working with another when we look at the three the three is creative expression the three is the artist so what happens with the three if you have a three expression and my husband and my daughter have this expression you need a lot of opportunity to express yourself creatively now, that might be writing, that might be art, singing, drama, whatever. Remember, the three has verbal talents, okay? So that'll, you'll see that in terms of maybe being a salesperson, maybe being a life coach. Um, you can also consider this if this is your life path number, your birthday number. So here's an example. My daughter, her expression is a three. She's a very... Um, artistic and she loves to play the piano and she's very good at writing she needs a lot of outlets for her creativity right that's the three somebody might want to be a chef it, or it doesn't really matter what you do you have to have that um, creative expression you're not going to be happy like working machinery and being on an assembly line you don't want that constant routine and sameness that's a killer for the three whether it's your expression, your life path number, your birthday number, okay? Let's look at the four. Now the four is really different. The four doesn't mind as much routine. The four wants things very practical and down to earth. So again, like I said before, thinking of the four, maybe this is your life path number, expression number, birthday number. The four likes a certain amount of structure and order. The four makes a very good manager, okay? or overseeing organization, or an administrator. A lot of times people with the four make good teachers because they like to learn and then teach. 
a very good friend of mine is a four life path number and i see a lot of that in her she's a teacher she has schedules she's very organized she's kind of super mom you can see that four energy in her the five is very different than the four the five wants change variety it wants freedom kind of like the one the five is like don't pin me down just like the sagittarius in astrology i need to be able to do what i want to do and like the three the five often has verbal abilities so the five is going to again i want to be in charge of me usually so maybe having their own business being an entrepreneur doing their own thing would be very appealing to someone with the five expression okay with the six, we get the carer and the nurturer. Um, again, psychology, you can see life coach. The six is very responsible. The six likes to be helpful, okay? So for the six to be in some kind of work where maybe they're by themselves in an office on a computer all day, that might not necessarily be satisfying to a six. Or maybe a six has to do something very, mechanical and not ever really working with others or not really being feeling like they can help and care that might be very dissatisfying the six needs to feel like it's helping you know people animals gardening it's got a real nurturing quality and it needs to feel like it's giving something to someone else helping build up someone else okay here if we look at the seven if you have an expression seven and this is mine you need an opportunity to keep your mind stimulated you need an opportunity to be able to study or research or you need to be able to um, delve deeper into something so i did a lot of research around famous people that will look at some famous people for so for instance um, mark zuckerberg his expression is seven his life path is five so he needs a lot of uh, variety and change but it's not surprising right he's into the computers and all of that with Facebook and the technical aspect of that that's the seven the seven often again is highly intuitive uh, so the seven isn't going to be happy um, maybe being a dance coach or um, maybe you know let's try to think of something else something like um, doing sales that might not be very satisfying to a seven the seven needs to use its mind because it's very analytical it needs to keep its mind occupied the balance of that it needs to also keep the mind from becoming too overactive but it needs to feel like it's really learning and exploring and what happens is the seven becomes the advisor or again the educator the professor you can see with some of these occupations that it requires a certain level of depth or understanding. So that's the seven. The eight is, again, there's some similarities to the one. Remember I said that there are certain numbers that like to be in charge. The eight is a powerhouse, usually a leader. It does not want someone telling it what to do. So if you have an eight expression, you may want to either have your own business or be an or or be a leader or be an administrator manager you don't like to be under somebody's thumb you may be very attracted to business you may want and the eight expression wants to be successful it wants to look successful it wants to have the image of looking good and it wants to have the money to live a nice life and it wants to be in charge of its own career so you can see some of those different professions there. Um, the eight expression is more likely wanting to be like this, like a, you know, the surgeon as opposed to maybe being an assistant because it doesn't like to be second in command, so to speak. If we look at the nine, again, the nine is that humanitarian and giver. And the nine expression, um, it's very intuitive and it's also a giving number. The difference with the nine sometimes you'll see is the nine often will reach larger groups of people. 
So for instance, if you have a, someone like who would be a therapist or a counselor, I sometimes have clients who I don't know their numerology, but I wouldn't be surprised to see other numbers in their chart, like a nine or an eight, where they're not going to be happy being one-on-one -on -one with someone all day long, and that's all they ever do, okay? The eight would probably be like that too. They're meant to reach larger groups of people, the eights and the nines. So for instance, a therapist or counselor might want to lead groups, might want to do retreats, might want to get into writing or speaking, okay? Because they're the humanitarian, they're re meant to reach the masses. They're meant to reach out and affect like a Gandhi, for instance, would have been a uh, life path nine. Um, and again, this is expression, but that energy of the nine is still gonna be the same in your expression number. And finally, we have the uh, two master number expression numbers. If you had an 11 or 22, okay, and that's where you add it up and you get like the 11 or 29, because 29 is basically an 11. If you get 11 or 29, or if you get 22 and you don't reduce those numbers because they're considered master numbers, a lot of times what happens with these people is they've had very challenging, difficult lives. I had a client once who not only was her life path number an 11, her expression number was 11. And she had had, um, I won't give away details, but she had not only a physical disability that affected her life forever, and she was born with that. She had had um, sexual abuse in her past, and she had um, not really a supportive family. She had a lot of layers. The reason why the master numbers sometimes will have such challenges is they're often going to go into professions where there's healing or compassion involved or being, again, the humanitarian. And it builds their strength inwardly to be able to be empathetic and compassionate and help others. And so a lot of times these expression numbers have maybe difficult childhoods or early struggles. They're also very intuitive and very intense numbers. And they need some kind of balance, right? Spiritual practice, meditation, they need to stay grounded. The difference between the 11 and 22, and this is to keep in mind if it's your birthday number, if it's your expression, a heart's desire that we'll talk about, or life path number, is that with these numbers, they, the 11 tends to be a little bit more in the clouds sometimes, and it needs to come down to earth and get practical. The 22, because its original number is a four, is practical. That's why they call it the master builder. And it wants them to have a lasting impact. So it will do something that, it may have this grandiose idea, but we'll find a practical way to make that happen. Sometimes the 11 can get lost in its visions and its dreams because it's kind of nice and fluffy there. But in reality, um, you know, you gotta make things happen here in the real world. And the 22 gets that. The 11 can learn it. It doesn't always come as naturally to the 11. Both of them may struggle with confidence. So if you see these numbers anywhere today when we're talking, um, the confidence usually has come from, like I said, the early struggles. And you build the confidence through the self-awareness, through the self-healing. And a lot of times then your work that makes you extra compassionate towards others and helps you in your work with others or how you relate to other people. Okay, so that's the expression number. So now I thought we'd move on to some famous examples so you can see how this plays out in real life people. So here we have our last, our current and last president, okay? So Donald Trump's a four life path. The four is about, you know, hardworking, um, business oriented sometimes, practical, can sometimes be a little bit rigid in its thinking, kind of, likes things structured, follow the rules, whatever, makes a good manager, and often will build um, success, career, financial, otherwise. But what here, look what's really interesting here. He has a five expression. The four and the five are very, very different. The four is like, let's be responsible, get things done. The five likes freedom, fun, and adventure. So I thought it was real interesting to bring him up because those two numbers are a little bit in conflict. 
And what have we seen in his life recently? All of the news around the affairs that he's had, um, the commitment issues he's probably had with his wife. That is that five expression. Because the five is like probably I'm doing all this, you know, I'm in charge of the country, I'm doing all these things, whatever you think about him as a president, but he's got a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. But the five is like, I wanna have fun, I wanna release from all the pressure, okay? So you can see the real difference there that he has um, in his chart. It's really different. And the expression number is the second most not important number in your chart, the life path first, and then your expression, they work together. So you can see that inner conflict we have, and you can see his past, the stories from his past, which to me is that five, okay? A little too much fun, a little bit too much, because um, the five sometimes can, and can have too much variety, too much stimulation, you know, sex, drugs, um, you know, food, whatever. It's, it's really, um, enjoying all of that life has to offer, but you can overdo that. So then let's look at Barack Obama. His two life path is that sensitive, caring life path that we talked about, but his expression is a one, okay? So here, they're a little bit in opposition, but he's found a way to channel that um, through leadership. The one expression tells me this man wants to be the best at what he does, and he wants to be a leader. Also, he's a Leo. So if we kind of look at him from more than just his life path number, it's no surprise that he would want to be a leader in some way, because the one wants to be the best. The one is very ambitious, and the one likes to take charge and be an individual, okay? Let's look now, I thought this was fascinating when I was looking around at some famous examples. Paul McCartney and his daughter Stella have the exact same life path number and the exact same expression number. It's fascinating to me. Um, we all know Paul McCartney is an amazing musician and composer. They're also both big in animal rights. And I did a little bit of reading and Stella McCartney is very passionate apparently about making sure that um, the materials she uses in her fashion line are uh, compassionately produced, you know, like she's very aware of animal rights and the fabrics or whatever it is that she's using in her clothing line. Okay. And they're very humanitarian oriented, but they're also both extremely successful business people right? Even though he's very creative. So there's that 22 where I talked about the master builder. She's created a very successful um, fashion clothing line. Often we've probably heard about different celebrities have worn that, but there's that 11 to that sensitivity, that caring. Okay. Whoops, jumped ahead a little too far. I lost my place here. Okay. Here's, here's one last slide on that. Here we have two, and I had to choose people that we would all kind of know. There's a little bit more diversity later on in some of my examples, but I had to choose people we knew enough of their life that we could kind of follow, like what have they been doing? So here's George Clooney, who's a one life path, who wants to be the best and ambitious and, and um, wants to be in charge of what he does. But here's that 22 four, that humanitarian. And, um, we know that he's done a lot of work charitably and he is very, I wish I could have done his wife, but I couldn't find her full birth name, but I wouldn't be surprised. She has some numbers in her chart too, but you can see that he's obviously a visionary. That's the 22 four. The 22 master number tells me that he is not just thinking of himself as an actor. He wants to do something to better humanity, that he wants to do something that's going to have a lasting impact. Meryl Streep's fascinating to me because she's a master life path number 336. Um, I see the six definitely. She has like four children, right? She's, she's um, definitely a mother. Her, there is a warmth to her, I think, if, you ever, if you've ever seen her interviewed. But look at her expression of five. 
we all know how Meryl Streep is so good at um, accents and all these different roles and her versatility. To me, that's that five expression as well. She is very much the consummate actor, the actor's actor, and that five with that verbal ability, five often is gifted in languages, right? So you can see how she uses that in her expression in her career and how it plays out. So the next thing we're going to move on to, and I'll just check with Leanne, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything before we move on? I don't think so. If anybody does, you can put it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask. Okay. So here's the heart's desire, or sometimes it's called the soul urge number. So this is where you want to look at your, your numbers again that you wrote down. Okay, with your birth name. So now look at your birth name and you're gonna only look at the vowels. This time you're gonna only look at the vowels. The heart's desire is exactly what it said, or soul urge. It's what your heart truly desires. It's your dreams, your hopes, your wishes. It's the inner you, okay? It's what, it again, shows talents that you possess, but it's what you deep down desire, okay? And it influences all the decisions you'll make in your life. So if you're going against your true nature, and we'll look at the numbers in a moment, look at your heart's desire number and see what's really important to you. So I used my name, my name as an example up here. You can, say, can see that I added the, the uh, E and the A are five and one. So five plus one plus five plus five, because I did the, five, the E, the A, and the two fives in my name, okay? Then I moved to my middle name and I took the same and I just did the vowels. So you're just basically taking all the vowels, adding them up and seeing the number that you get. Mine is a nine. Again, if you get that 11 or a 29, which becomes an 11, or you get a 22 or 33, you don't reduce those numbers because those are master numbers, okay? So I'll just give you guys a moment to calculate that. And again, we're using your full name that you have at birth. And when you guys are done, if you can give me that thumbs up so I'll know when it's good to move on. Okay. So those of you that are still adding up, I'm just going to keep talking and you can keep adding up as if you need a little more time. Here's that chart again in case somebody needs to see the chart. Remember, the Y is a vowel. Like in Yvonne, it would be a vowel. In Lynn, it's a vowel. Look at what's surrounding it. If it's preceded by a consonant or it's the only vowel sound, okay, if it's the only vowel sound in that name, it's going to be considered a vowel, right? Okay, so let's move on. Um, I have some examples here, and let's see what my other slide. I'm gonna talk about the examples and then I'll talk about the different numbers, okay? Because every time I talk about all these different numbers, you'll start getting in your head, the three is like happy, upbeat, right? The one is the leader, you'll kind of see that. So here's Mindy Kaling, right? She has a three hearts desire. Uh, we all know that she's an actress, she's a comedian, she has her own um, show where she, wrote it but she so you can see where the three remember how we talked about creative expression and a lot of threes i read will have um a lot of people with three life path or three expression or heart's desire comedians that's the the three number so it's no surprise that she writes comedy and that she's kind of bubbly and upbeat and funny 
right? And again, like we talked about before, creative expression. So not as, only is she acting in these shows, and apparently she has a new show that's on that she's also um, helped create. She's writing. She needs multiple outlets for that. Here again, we have Barack Obama, and he's got a one heart's desire. Again, that leadership that we talked about before, that wanting to be independent. Here's a couple other examples. Um, Jane Goodall, look at her heart's desire. It's a nine. That pairs really well with her life path of six. The six is caring and giving, and so is that nine. It's the humanitarian. Remember how she's reaching larger groups? Look what she's done. Here with, you can see with the chimpanzee, the animal rights. She still to this day is still very committed to, to her mission and her cause in life, right? Now here's something I found kind of fascinating. Look at Dave Letterman. He's a one life path, he's an Aries, that's the leader, right? So he had his own show, successful show. Look at his heart's desire, number nine. Now, with this new Netflix show, maybe some of you have seen it, maybe you haven't. He's got a new show on Netflix. And what's interesting is he's not just interviewing famous people. He's interviewing people that are um, doing good things in the world as well. Like, I can't remember how to pronounce her last name, but Malala, you know her? That young woman who was, um, uh, I believe she was like shot and, shot and she's, speaking out now for girls' rights, women's rights. And he interviews her. And even when he interviews George Clooney, he's not just talking about him as a celebrity. He's talking about the humanitarian work that George Clooney is doing and his wife's influence. And he interviews his, his mom and dad and how they've taken in this uh, refugee and they're helping out this young man who's had a lot of family members die in the country that he's from. So he's going deeper into his work and he's using his platform as a celebrity to um, want to do more good in the world. So that's really fascinating to me. So let's look at your heart's desire number. Again, you're gonna see some of the uh, things that I've said before. You have a heart's desire one, you wanna be in charge of yourself. You may in fact find yourself in positions of leadership so for instance, my husband's a heart desire one. He does not like to be told what to do. He happens to be in, in um, a school administrator, but in our personal relationship, it's like he does not like to be told what to do. He likes to do his own thing. He's not someone like me that tends to maybe want to join groups so much, but you're definitely individualistic, um, creative, original. It's that pioneer, okay? Again, here's the two. The two's a little softer. The, the two wants companionship, partnership. The two wants everybody to get along. It doesn't like conflict. It's very sensitive. And then we have that three, upbeat, friendly, outgoing, social, creative, right? Talkative. So let's look at four. That four heart's desire is going to make you want to be hardworking, um, practical and reliable. You're going to want structure. Uh, tends to be sometimes blunt or very honest. And you need, especially if you have four prominent in chart, you need time to relax and to let go and to be more flexible. The five, again, we talked about freedom loving five. If you've got a five hearts desire, you need to be able to have choices. You need variety. You don't want to be pinned down and you might need, like travel and adventure. If you've got that hearts desire five and you go to like a nine to five job and you're stuck in a cubicle and you're doing data entry, that's going to kill your soul. Your heart's desire or your soul's urge five wants to go see the world or meet a lot of different people or talk to different people or change things. Sometimes the five is called the catalyst because it wants to bring new ideas and new change. It's very different than the four. 
So the five doesn't want to go join, the five hearts desire doesn't want to like go join the Elks Club and put a uniform on and go to work and do the same thing every day. Okay. The five needs variety. The five I'm, needs. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt here and just let everybody yeah. know that I'm an example of this because not only am I a five expression number, but I'm a five hearts desire. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, you just use me as an example. I started the YouTube channel. You know, I, I don't do the, the rat race, the conventional corporate America w working at a job just sucks the soul out of me. Mm -hmm. Um, communication very much. So the verbal communication, the writing, needing new experiences, all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's, it's just fascinating. I just wanted to share that with you because you guys have been watching me for a while yeah. and I happen to be, um, expression, uh, Expression and Heart's Desire 5, that's a double whammy. <laughs> that's what I was going to say, Leanne. Um, the fives and the threes, too, are often very charismatic. The fives, the nines, the threes, um, sometimes sixes, too, very charismatic. Okay? So you'll see fives, um, like I've mentioned her before in the first recording, like an Angelina Jolie. Actors, because there's this ability, like the Meryl Streep we talked about, you can kind of take on a role and kind of merge into that. You're very verbally talented. So you have a double whammy of five, heart's desire and expression. You need to make your own choices. Yes. And you need to have a flexible schedule. Yes. And you need to see lots of different people and new experiences. Because the five is a catalyst, it's here to shake up convention. It's here to say, we need to do new things in a new way. Okay? And, if you, and you need it in your own life and then in your work, you can help other people bring change into their life for the better, for improvement. The five wants to help and give, but it needs to kind of do it on its own terms a little bit more, right? The five hearts desire is going to have a really hard time, like I said, putting on a uniform and doing the same thing day after day. It's going to kill its soul. The four yes. hearts desire could do that more easily. Yes. But again, you have to look at all your numbers, right? Because if you're um, a four hearts desire, but you're an eight life path, I doubt you're still going to want to be doing the same thing because the eight's very strong-willed and likes to be in charge of itself. Okay, well, let's look at the six and the seven. The six hearts desire, again, is that nurturer and carer. That's where we might have the nurse, the doctor, the counselor. It's warm and sympathetic. It needs a, a nice... Um, looking home. It needs to be caring either for family, friends, or its pets. It needs to feel like it has a way to feel it of itself, right? The seven, like we talked about before, the seven hearts desire wants to have time alone sometimes. It needs nature. And it needs to have that mental stimulation. It needs to be able to like it's learning and then developing knowledge or wisdom. It's also usually intuitive or mystical or spiritual. And if it's not, um, developing a spiritual belief or practice will help settle down that over analytical mind the seven can have. Okay, that's the way to free the seven is some kind of way to relax the mind. The way to free up the six is to have self-care because the six can overgive. Okay. So let's look at the eight and the nine. You have an eight heart's desire, you want to be successful. You would prefer to have enough money, pre preferably a lot of money, so that you can live a life, nice lifestyle or that you can um, have freedom and choice to do what you want to do. You're a very determined and strong person. You probably want to be in charge of your work in some capacity, if not in charge of other people. The nine, again, like we talked about before, there's that humanitarian. The nine has an, an artistic side. It's very idealistic. So um, if the eight, can be very driven and determined. The eight's heart desire usually needs to be less critical of itself or less demanding of itself, can be can hard on itself. The nine 
learn needs to learn forgiveness and to learn that it's fulfillment comes through selfless giving okay and then let's look at 11 and 22 those master numbers now here's something really if you notice these numbers again if you ever get your whole chart done and you see 11 22 or 33 those master numbers it's really important that you develop some kind of spiritual practice or faith or understanding, okay? Because the 11s, 22s, and 33s are here to help raise consciousness. They're here to have a deeper understanding of life. They're not here to be the religious zealot who judges people. They're here to help understand that, you know, life goes on. There is a life after life, that we are a soul. So you can see that those 11 and 22, again, like we talked about before, are the humanitarians, they're visionary, they're intuitive. And again, it takes time to mature into these numbers because possibly you've had a challenge, right? A lot of times where I see 11s, 22s, or 33s in somebody's chart, they've had life challenges. Now, all of the numbers can have life challenges, but it's usually a given uh, when I look at someone's chart, that it's they've had struggles or challenges to develop their compassion, to develop their wisdom and maturity. Okay. Whoops, going a little too fast here. All right. So the last number I'm going to talk about that you can figure out is your maturity number. Okay. Now this one's a lot easier to figure. So all you do to figure your maturity number is you take your life path number. So if you know your life path number, which is basically taking your months, your day, and the year. Okay, so if you didn't watch the first call, if you're born, for instance, in October, that's a one. If you're born in um, December, 12 becomes a three, right? So figure the number for your month, then you figure your day. And then you figure your year. So you want to add up all the numbers in the year that you're born. Not just the last two numbers, but like all the numbers. And then you add all those numbers together. Again, if you get that 11, 22, or 33, you don't reduce those down. But to do your maturity number, you're going to take your life path number plus that expression number we added earlier. Okay? So the expression number was the one where you added up all the letters in your name which became all the numbers in your name, that's your expression number. Uh, real quick, um, are they adding <clears throat> the numbers that they got when they reduced it? Because when I added all my original numbers together, I got 77. So then 7 plus 4 is 14 and 1 exactly. plus 45. Exactly. So are they, adding, are they adding their reduced numbers or their original numbers? The reduced numbers, unless... Um, you get these master numbers. So um, let's say somebody had an 11 expression and 11 life path number, that's 22. You wouldn't reduce that. So if you get 22, you get like a 29 or 11, you don't reduce that. Everything else you reduce it down. Does that make sense? Yes. 61 becomes seven, 54 becomes nine. So if you had if you add your life path number and your expression number together and you get an 11, you don't reduce that. Exactly. Exactly. So I'll just keep talking while you're kind of figuring that out. What happens with the maturity number that's called that because you usually start to become aware of it at maturity. Now, it varies from individual to individual. Some people start becoming aware of it in their 30s. Maybe a really more aware person might become aware of that sooner, but most people will feel its influence in midlife. For some people, that's late 30s. Some people, it's mid 30s. Some people, it's their 40s. Generally, kind of by your late 30s to your 40s, that's more typical that you're going to start feeling the influence of your maturity number. And they'll say that if you're a self aware individual, you'll be in the full expression of your maturity number by the time you're in your 50s, okay? 
It's basically a secondary life theme or objective that you feel called to. Now what happens is your life path number and your expression number work together with this maturity number, okay? So it enhances the purpose and expression of your life path number. So can I use you as an example, Leanne? Yes. I usually, you guys know her probably better than me. I'm sure you do. So Leanne is a life path six. Wait, 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 wait. What? They know me better than you do? No, they would know you better than they know me. Oh, okay. I was going to say, we're like best friends. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean is it, it's easier for them to get a sense of you than me because they know you better. Got it. So Leanne's life path six, that giving, caring, nurturing life path. Her expression is a five. Now when we add it up, we get a master number of 11 too. Now, when I got to know Leanne and we started talking and I did her numerology, I was like, yes, I'm not surprised that your maturity number is an 11-2. Do you want to share briefly what's happened in your 30s, Leanne? Um, well, sure, but like, what, what am I focusing on? What do you want me to tell them? <laughs> so, what happens with the, you know, your own self-healing, the stuff with your mom, this, the mediumship, the uh, psychic ability, oh. all of that. Okay, okay, yeah. You mean like kind of how it unfolded and how I, yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> basically, um, uh, if you know my story a little bit, I, I, I as, as a child, I've always been connected to spirit. I've seen spirit. I've always had knowing and psychic ability, etc. And I was born knowing my mother was going to die. So I spent my entire life trying to save her from uh, her, her, demise save her from the inevitable um you know outcome because i was born knowing it was going to happen and that's part of my uh, mediumistic ability well throughout the year okay my my um, abilities uh, psychic intuition mediumship all that kind of stuff got suppressed right because it just happens to all of us in society as you as you get is you come up through the school system and, you know, you got family dynamics and religion and all this kind of stuff. So you kind of conform. Well, in my thirties, I was 32 years old and that's when I had a reawakening. Um, and so, um, that's, that's when it really came on me because then I, I got the hit that kind of a long story, but nutshell version. I got the hit that my mother was in trouble. I needed to go look for her and find her. I did. I was the one that found her dying and I got her to the uh, hospital and we went on from there. At that point, because the, the hit came in very strongly, I mean, it was like unmistakable. Um, and it was as strong as it was when I was a child. And I kind of thought it would be a once and done situation, but that was just the beginning. So after, you know, during her passing, after she passed, then everything just reopened for me and it came in like a tidal wave. And, um, all of a sudden it was like the mediumship was just boom in my face and the psychic abilities was even stronger and knowing this and knowing that. And I thought I was losing my mind for a while during that time. Okay. Of everything reopening, I was also going through a traumatic, uh, grief and post-traumatic stress uh, disorder from, from her passing. Cause it was very graphic and visual. I also got sick and I was bedridden ill for uh, more than a year. And so it kind of morphed itself into this dark night of the soul, basically. And during that time, there was a death and a rebirth with me. And I kind of popped out of the other side of it. And here we are. So that's kind of the nutshell version. But during that time, the YouTube channel was born because I was told that I need to be sharing something with people. But I was such a hermit uh, because that's the Virgo in me. And, and I have a lot of planets in the 12th house of astrology. So I like to be very private. I'm a writer. You know how writers are. We're very private and quiet. And we just want to be left alone. But spirit pushed me out of my comfort zone and said, no, you need to share stuff with people. And I said, well, I'm not leaving the house. And so they said, then we're putting you on the internet. And that's how the YouTube channel was born. And then since then, um, there has been more reawakening. There's been more mediumship. There's been development. I have found spiritual teachers to help me on my path. And um, now I'm more connected to spirit 
than ever before. I mean, I can actually sit in meditation and get direct messages and direct channeling now right in my ears. So that's really growing and blossoming. So I guess the point of this is because I'm a, a maturity number 11 two or 11. And as you guys remember from the description of 11, 11 is highly spiritual, highly intuitive. You're on a spiritual path. You are everything else, whatever else goes along with the 11, I forget, but you're meant to, to, um, you know, um, embody yourself in such a way that you are, you know, um, uh, doing that sort of thing in whatever your life purpose is so that you can fulfill, you know, your destiny. Does that, yes. was that good, Jeanette? <laughs> it's outstanding. Yes. Okay. The reason I wanted her to talk about that is because not just her life path, or excuse me, her maturity number being an 11 too, but you can see the different experiences she's had that she's maturing into. So the 11-2 is the spiritual messenger, the psychic's number. It's no surprise that she's developing her mediumship, that she does um, the psychic readings with the throw, that she's had the struggles and the self-healing, um, her mother's death and the premonitions, all of that's that 11-2, the maturity number. So as uh, Leanne grows and matures, the spirituality, the intuition, the mediumship, the sensitivity, the compassion, the creativity, all of that will come to play more and more in her life and her work. So let's look at some more maturity numbers examples. I remember how we talked about Dave uh, Letterman before. What's fascinating to me is his maturity number. If you know that Dave Letterman um, many years ago, uh, came out where he was having that affair with that young intern. And then he had a lot of affairs that he admitted to. I saw this interview several years ago when not, you know, after some of this had happened and he had therapy and whatever, he had a real deep interview with Oprah and he got emotional and he was like, I hurt my wife. I almost ruined a really great thing. Cause at this point he'd had his son and he was married. And uh, he was like, I screwed up big time. I really hurt the people that I love the most. What happens with that two maturity? What's the two about? The two is about sensitivity, about compassion, about your feelings and other people's feelings. He had a real wake up call of, I need to be sensitive to the people in my life, my son, my wife. I wanted to have fun and mess around, but I've hurt people. And now I need to really learn about my impact on other people. That's his two maturity. I thought that was fascinating. So <clears throat> again, the numbers keep repeating the, the themes of those numbers, right? The one maturity is about leadership, independence, individuality. Um, let me use an example. I have a close friend who's in a difficult marriage. She's a one life path number. She struggles with leaving that marriage. The one maturity means look at your life where you're allowing yourself to be an individual. Where am I maybe being called to leadership or to at least be authentically me? be the individual that I'm meant to be. Maybe I've stressed myself all my life and now I need recognition. You know, I deserve recognition. I, re I deserve success, right? I deserve being able to do what I want to do in my life. That's the one maturity. The two, like we talked about before, is sensitivity towards yourself or others. It's intuition. Maybe there will be opportunities for teamwork or cooperation, working with others. Um, there may be opportunities to bring to people together. There may be uh, more of an appreciation of the arts and culture. Okay. The three maturity, when I see this in someone's chart, which I've seen before in other clients, and they've maybe had difficulty in their life. The three tells me now the second half of your life is a time for um, more fun, more joy. 
So an example I use is a client I have that was my hairdresser and I looked at her, we did her chart and she'd had a lot of challenges in her life. And I said, look, look at your chart. Here's that three. The three is about joy, optimism, friendship, uh, having fun. I said, your second half of your life is about being lighter and enjoying your life more. Well, she was going to Hawaii more. She loved Hawaii. She started making jewelry and selling it in her little salon that she had. She'd been so serious and hardworking. She'd been a single mom. And I said, now's the time for you to start enjoying your life more, having more fun, doing your jewelry, doing the things that bring you joy. That's the three maturity. Okay. Here's the four maturity. Um, when someone has a four maturity, you may be called to be a manager. Maybe you want to look at business. It's about being organized and goal oriented and focused, um, being reliable, looking at your commitment to other people. Okay, the five maturity could be the opposite situation or similar to like the three. Maybe you've had a lot of responsibility. Now it's time for you to travel, to um, have some adventure and freedom, have some creativity, have some opportunities to be able to make choices. Okay. Always to every number, there's a flip side. So if you've been somebody who's really irresponsible your whole life, well, then your five maturity is the opposite of that. It's about how am I going to responsibly use my freedom, right? Whoops. And I want to remind everyone quickly, uh, your maturity number tends to take place midlife, so 30s mm -hmm. to 40s. Um, it's a secondary so, life theme, Yeah. Right? It's a secondary life thing. So if you are someone who isn't self-aware and let's say you have a four maturity and you have come and go as you please, you really don't care about being responsible to other people. The four maturity is like, it's time to buckle down and get real. It's time to be committed and responsible. Okay. So that's kind of why that maturity number is there to help you reflect and go deeper into your life and look at what needs to be brought more into your life. So again, we have the six around nurturing and giving someone who's maybe, um, maybe you can somebody that hasn't been able to settle down. Well, you have a six maturity. So now is a really great time to spend time with friends and family, maybe get more involved in your community. Maybe you have a seven maturity where you haven't had a lot of time to yourself. And the seven maturity is like, now it's really important that you spend some time getting to know you. And maybe you look at your spirituality. Maybe you have time to read, to study, to just get to know yourself. Okay. Here's an eight maturity. The eight means, okay, let's look at my career. Let's look at my finances and let's look at opportunities for me to be successful in my life or to be at work. Or maybe I'm going to be called. So that's happened to like my, my husband. He is an eight maturity, and what happened is his um, more and more leadership positions as he's gotten older in his career, and that's in line with his eight maturity. Okay. And then here's the last ones: the nine maturity, which is mine number. And that's about being the humanitarian and the giver. Um, appreciation of the arts, wisdom. If you had a 9, 11, 22, I would also possibly, I would say probably the 8 as well. You're likely meant to reach larger groups of people in some kind of way. Okay? So if there's self-confidence issues or things like that to work through, that's fine. But your soul is wanting you to reach out in a bigger way in your life. Now, that could be a lot of different ways. It could be through writing. It could be music, art. It could be through, you know, whatever it is that you do. But it's reaching more people to help 
And it could be to uplift people, it could be to inspire people. It could be maybe you want to do something charitable. But those are the 9, 11, and 22. It's the things we talked about before. About They're all very humanitarian. They're all very intuitive. And they're all about wisdom, about spirituality. Okay. So here's some more examples that I wanted to look at with you guys. Yeah. Okay, so here's Oprah Winfrey. And her maturity number, like, like Leanne's, is 11 too. I chose this photo of her with Eckhart Tolle. What happened with Oprah Winfrey, right? If you noticed, her, her show before she got uh, the Oprah show started to change. I thought that the show she did had a lot more depth to them. But what happened as she did OWN is she started doing this show called Super Soul Sunday. And she's interviewing people like Eckhart Tolle. She's interviewing people who um, do research into compassion, counselors, therapists. She's also interviewing people like Evan Alexander, who was that brain surgeon who had the near-death experience. She's doing a ton now around spirituality and about personal healing, self-awareness. That's her loving to maturity, okay? She's going right in alignment with that 11 to maturity number. And she's still Oprah, so she's reaching a ton of people and she's humanitarian, all of that already existed in her, but now she's going a little deeper. Let's look at Paul Newman. Paul Newman, um, if you know, he has Newman's own, that food, which it's like 486, I don't know if it's one or more than a million dollars. I think it's like $486 million it's already given to charity. Wow. And he did the hole in the wall or hole in the gang or something camp, right? Here's that quotation with him. What could be better than to hold your hand out to people who are less fortunate than you are? So we see that nine expression, the humanitarian, and the eight maturity, where he's a very successful man and making money, but he's choosing to also create this company that is still going on today that gives all of its profits to charity. And it's highly successful and it generates a lot of money. But when the A is coming from higher consciousness, it balances the material with the spiritual. So he didn't do that just to make money. He did it in a way to help others. So again, that's another famous person we can look at because we all know, um, a lot of us know who Paul Newman is. He chose to use his mature years to really build a lasting impact and, and it was still self-generating the profits to help other people. And then finally, this is a woman, Dolores Huerta. I thought she, her numbers were fascinating. She did a lot. She was an activist and did a lot to improve conditions for farm workers. There were not a lot of people who cared at all that these farm workers who still today are doing really difficult work. You know, when I was a, in junior high and high school as a teenager and as a young kid in junior high, I used to pick strawberries and berries. And I would be amazed that there would be family members with their children. And that's what they're living on. Here I was trying to get money to buy school clothes. And we have whole families supporting their families on these low wages. So she's known for being this humanitarian and being outspoken to improve conditions for farm workers. Look at this woman's numbers. Nine life path, nine expression, nine maturity, right? Fully humanitarian improving conditions for a really large group of people. She's really living out um, the higher vibration or energy of her numbers in her chart. So that's kind of in a, the talking I was going to do about, again, your expression number, your heart's desire number, your maturity number. Does anybody want me to look at their numbers or talk about them? Does anybody have any questions? Feel free to um, unmute yourself and hop on the call and ask away. Yeah. 
Darlene, I think you've got to unmute yourself. Teresa White, she um, raised her hand. Let me, oh. Question. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, hi. Yes, I have a question. Um, I was adopted when I was like five years old. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I heard you mention about using both names. So my question is, do I add, you know, the letters, all the letters of my birth name mm -hmm. plus the adopted name? Or do I add like my first name, middle name, original? What I, what I recommend that you do, and um, is it Teresa? Okay, I'm just, what I would recommend that you do, Teresa, is I would recommend that you do them separately, okay? So like I have two different names and then I want you to, you to use your own intuition and your own gut sense of yourself. Okay. And so you can do this yourself or you can have a chart done or I do charts for people, however you want to do it. Look at both because they're both influencing you. And because you knew, know you better than anybody else, you decide which numbers are influencing you the most. So all these numerology books and everything I've studied would say, you go with your original name. Well, what happened is I looked at both names and my expression number is the same for both names, but I don't really feel fully, like it doesn't fit completely, the first name with all of the numbers. Does that make sense? Uh-huh, yes. Because I have a really desire to give, and that's my heart's desire number. Now, I still have sevens in me, but I don't want to just always be alone and just research or study all the time or be a hermit. That's not really, I have parts of me like that, but not really completely. And so you've got to look at all the numbers, and then you kind of decide which ones feel most right to you. Does that make sense? It does, yes. Yeah. So anyone that's, that's adopted, I would, I would recommend you either do it yourself or you can do it on the internet or however you want to do it. It's not hard to calculate. I would calculate both sets for both names and look at both is what I would do. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Is there anybody else? Yes. My question is, when calculating the expression number, would I use my given name or married name? Um, I had a little hard time hearing because you're a little far away from, can you repeat that for me, please? Yes. I just wanted to know, when doing the expression number, would I yeah. use my given name at birth or would mm -hmm. I use my married name, my last name? So what happens in numerology is you want to use your first given name. Okay. Good. But those work out better. <laughs> yeah. But again, there's something we didn't talk about it today just because it's a little bit more involved. There's something called minor expression and minor heart's desire and minor. So if you do both names, you'll see kind of an added influence. So you'll have an expression number with your given name. And you'll have a minor expression number with your married name. You'll have a heart's desire and a minor heart's desire with your married name. Does that make sense? Yes, and I, I, I did both. So yeah. I was just wondering which one was. Yeah. Does anybody else have questions or comments? Bring it on. Let's have a little, let's have a little discussion, people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get this off screen share, Leanne. Is it still on screen share? Yeah, but it, it froze. What, um, you're viewing Jeanette's screen. Yeah. What's it doing on your end? I'm trying to get it so I can see everybody, but it's okay. I just see the real small strip, and I was just trying to see everybody a little better. Oh, um, how do you, uh, did you, did you stop sharing screen? No. I think, I think it'll happen if you stop sharing screen. But where do I get that control? Uh, okay, sharing. So you're at the top of oh, your, stop share. okay, stop, there we go. All right. There it is. 
Thank you. All right, so does anybody want me to talk about or look at something with their number or have any questions? Jan, yes, yeah, Greg. Um, I thought it was interesting. My first name added up to 21, my middle name added up to 21, and my last name added up to a 42. Yeah. So, like, 21 and 21 and 42. But um, then that became a 3, and then I thought that the vowels in my name, when I added those up, um, the first name was a 1, the second name was a 1, the last name was a 1, so there was another 3. Mm. Is that um, like a, is it usually a pattern like that? Not necessarily. So you're telling me that your heart's desire was a three and your expression was a one? Um, I didn't write, what is the expression? My full name? Yeah. Well, my full name ended up being a three. Okay, your full name's a three. Okay. Yeah. And, and the um, vowels in my name were also a three. Oh, so they're both a three. That's what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, okay. but but I thought it was more interesting, like, that. Uh, I have three initials in my first name, so that was a one. Two initials in my second one came up to be a one, and my third one was a one. Is that, I just thought that was kind of, I don't know. And it's so, what happens in numerology is okay. it's a lesser influence, but for instance, your, your first name is going to have um, an influence if it adds up to a number. And your middle name has a number, and your last name has a number. So, for instance, they'll say the last name has kind of a ancestral influence. So it's kind of interesting to me that I chose not to take my husband's last name. Now, I already have a ton of sevens, or not ton. I already have two sevens in my chart. If we look at the last name page, which would have been my married name, there's more sevens. I don't need more seven in my chart, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to be like completely socially off by myself or whatever, that the seven can be a little too analytical or that way. So it's kind of interesting if you look at all, there's so many fascinating ways, like you can look at all the different numbers influencing you. So um, you said you had a lot of ones in the different names that added well, up? The initials, my first name initial added to a one, my second name, my, you know, my oh, middle name. The first, the first and letter, do you mean the first letter? The vowel, I'm sorry, the vowels. Oh, the, the vowels, it means most with your first name. So your name is Jan? Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a little quick rundown on like this. This is kind of a, a little off what we talked about today, but it's still significant in, a, in numerology. So Janice, I already can tell Janice, your first uh, letter is a J. That means that there's an independence, a leadership, uh, wanting to do well at things, okay? The A is also a one. Because the J is a one and A is a one, that your mm -hmm. first vowel, that is a double influence. You're going to approach life from wanting to be independent. There's definitely leadership there. There's definitely a desire to want to do well, okay? Because that's the one. So the, the fact that it's... Um, uh, both the first vowel and the first letter of S are ones is significant. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you see a lot of ones in your full name, then that, that tells you that you have those qualities inherent in your makeup. Um, is Greg your middle? I mean, excuse me, your That's your, my married name. Okay. My, my maiden name was Harding, H A R D I N G. So just looking at the name Greg, I, three, I see three sevens because G is seven. The seven is the introspective, it's mysticism, spirituality, it's intuition, okay? So that's had somewhat of an influence on you as well by having that last name Greg. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then I was going to ask about like a birth date because so I... I'm 11, 11, 1950. So when I take the 11, you said don't take them down. So that makes, a, is that a 22? And then I add a six, so it comes to 28. Is that how it works? Yeah, I missed, so 11, I 11, 11, and six is what you've got. Okay, eight. Okay, well, you're a one life path. Is that what you've got? I 
don't know. I, I didn't figure it out. I thought I only thought that was a maturity number. What, maybe I, I missed your first time. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So um, what what's your birthday? 11, 11, 1950. Yeah. So one plus five is six. So yeah, you're a one life path number. So you've got a lot of one in you, which is the independent, the original, the creative, the if you don't want to lead other people, you want to be in charge of yourself. It's the pioneer. It's the visionary. You probably don't like being told what to do. No. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay because you are meant to do your own thing. You're meant to be the individual. You're meant to be the creative person who thinks of, you know, new ways of doing things. Okay. You're not going to be satisfied. Um, I use that example a lot just because it's sort of a stereotype. You're not going to be satisfied working in a cubicle in an office and having somebody tell you what you do every hour. That's not the one. The one needs self-autonomy, self-determination. The one is very determined because it has its own ideas and it needs to follow its own ideas. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. I work in a cube, but I... I know what I want to do and nobody tells me what exactly. to do. It's not so I, much a cubicle, you know, it's not yeah. that. It's just, you know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. be the office drone that every, that every like 20 minutes your boss is like telling you what to do. It's fine if you work in an office, but it's like yeah. you need to have control of your work. Day. Right. You yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to stand it if they were like hovering over me all the mm -hmm. time. Exactly. Are you creative at all? Because you have a double three. No, yes. I'm not. I don't. I. Are you good at communication, or or do you like to write? Because three is also communication. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think my throat chakra is closed up, and I need to open that. Um, okay. it's, hard, it's hard for me to talk in public. Ah, you probably have some creative streak in you that just hasn't been nurtured because you can't have like if you any any number you have in your chart. I mean, it's in you. So if you got a double three, there's, you got something lying dormant in you. Yeah, that's the something else we should talk about. The three expression, the three hearts desire. The fact that you have a double three um, is very significant because you need to have, I wish I could see your picture again. You need to have some kind of self-expression, Jan. Um, the self work around the, um, this is going to help you with that, okay? Because mm -hmm. you need self-expression and you need some kind of creativity. The one is very creative as well. So is the three. So anything that you can do to help free the heart, the emotions, because the three is about emotion too. And sometimes three gets in the mind a little bit and self-critical. And the one does as well. So are you hard on yourself? Probably harder than anybody else. Yeah. So anything that you can do that will soften, go into the heart, whatever that is that you like to do. Some people it's gardening or animals or painting. It really doesn't matter. To get you into that more heart space, that's going to help free up that creativity that wants to come out in you. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. The other thing she was asking in the beginning, Jeanette, she had noticed the pattern with her numbers, like, you know, threes and whatever. And I think she was asking you, do you see that a lot when you do new, people's numerology charts? Do you tend to see patterns in numbers that pop up or? Is that normal to see that? It's memorable if a number appears more than once in your chart. Okay. Because that's a double intensity, double intensity. So like in astrology, if you're, um, a Leo sun sign and a Leo moon, that's significant. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing in astrology. I mean, excuse me, numerology. It is significant. Um, it's so individual in yeah. from person to person. I know um, my intuition tells me that when I start to do, when I do the combined intuitive reading and numerology, I don't look at the chart first. I look at the chart second. But I can begin to intuitively feel, and I'm not surprised then when I look at the chart if I see certain numbers. 
because certain numbers have a certain energy and vibration to them. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So people who are interested in things like what we're talking about today, if I look at your whole chart, not just even what we talked about today, but the whole chart, I'm going to probably see 11s or 22s or 9s or 7s. Where else would you find numbers? So I'm, I know I missed that first one. You probably talked about yeah, it. But. New, numerology, like astrology, that's why I recommend if people really want to understand themselves better is to have a chart done and to have it done by a numerologist because it will look at a lot of different things, more than what we have time to talk about today. Right. We'll look at birthday number. We'll look at your personality number. We'll look at the major expression and the minor. We'll look at all the letters in your name. We'll look at what numbers appear most frequently, what and, and letters or numbers, right? What letters don't appear in your name? We'll look at your challenges, your karmic numbers. We'll look at cycles and timing in your life. And it's all based on those names of your birth name, the name you go by now, and your birth date. So when I look at somebody's entire chart, I get a better, bigger picture of them. And you start to see life story stuff, right? Because numerology will look at what happens from birth to my 20s, what happens in midlife, like my 30s and 40s, what happens in my 50s and, and on. And what are some influences? What are some gifts and opportunities? You can see that in people's charts. And how do we get a chart from you? <laughs> If you want a chart done, you can um, either email, you can, uh, how have we talked about this? Well, you can email me, and my email is mariposa, M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A, -A, and then it's J Hill, my last name, H-I-L-L. -L. So it's mariposa, J Hill, at AOL.com. So the letter J and then the word Hill? Hill, my last name, H-I-L-L. -L. It's really helpful to people who are wanting clarity around purpose, around career, around life transition. A lot of my coaching clients come to me at midlife, 40s, 50s, 60s, they even had people in their 70s. Because what happens is we grow and we change and we mature. And we have new things we want to do where we are not the same that we were in our 20s or 30s, right? And yeah. your numerology can, when I look at your chart, it can help show like, oh gosh, there's that verbal ability or the writing ability. There's the intuition. Hey, I can even see, like, I'm not surprised you have psychic ability, right? It's validation. Like, Leanne and I know this because of the intuitive psychic work we do, even if you don't look at anybody's numerology. But I like numerology because it's additional validation. And it also shows some timing and cycles in your life. It phases in your life. So numerology will look at different phases. You know, your younger years, to your 20s, your 30s, 40s, your 50s, and later. It will look at um, even a few years of your life. There's things called essence that we can't talk about that's based on the transit of the letters in your name. There's just a lot of more depth and detail. And when you really start looking at compatibility for instance we didn't talk too much about that you can look at relationships and different numbers and you can see where people are challenged or compatible you can look at like i talked about career you can look at um all sorts of stuff uh like i said intuitive ability healing capacities um it's just, it's in the numbers and when numbers are especially um certain numbers or numbers are repeated that tells you something and it's a validation it provides a little more clarity i for instance here's an example of me my life path is 11 too but i didn't really understand what that meant until i started studying numerology in my um when i was 37 i really started studying numerology i'm 47 now i questioned all the time i started doing intuitive readings um i started studying psychic ability and intuition in my late 20s but I was like, oh, am I supposed to be doing this? This is just so out there. You know, once I saw the numerology, I was like, that makes sense. It makes sense. The difficult life challenges, the not having a lot of family support. I saw it in my chart. 
and it helped me come to terms with some of the challenges I'd had and some of the, um, you know, lack of support, let's put it that way. There are certain numbers that don't get a lot of support in your life. And it develops that inner strength, it develops the compassion, the wisdom. And then when you understand that, like why that is, you understand the purpose of it, I feel like it helps you kind of settle with that. Like, okay, this makes sense. Or I can kind of deal with this now a little bit better. I understand why this is happening to me or has happened to me. So I just want to butt in here. Um, anybody who's interested, I put uh, Jeanette's email address in the chat box. Uh, so if you click on the chat box and open it, you'll see. I wrote it out there, Mariposa, J. Hill at, at AOL. Um, the, the, the couple little things I wanted to mention was, um, you know, how when Jeanette was talking about when she looks at your chart and she'll look at, like, you, you write out your name. Like, I, um, I don't know if you can really see, but I put all the numbers, right, under my name, just like you, you all did. And I was just uh, interested in, you know, because she said a repetition of numbers. Or, you know, even if you have... Um, like the dominant numbers throughout your name, but you might have one or two of the other ones. So like, for example, my, my life path number is six. So it's nurturing, it's mothering, it's all that other stuff that we were talking about. But my expression number is five and my heart's desire number is five. So I need change. I need to travel. I need to talk to people. I need to whatever. However, I'm a natural born writer and the writing ability is definitely in my natal chart. But it's also showing in my numerology. So I wrote here, throughout my name, I have seven fives. Yes. Yep. Okay? Yep. But I also have two threes. Yep. So three is creative and artistic talent and communication. Yes. It's got three number ones, which yes. is why, which is, you know, that, that underlying feeling for me that I don't like being told what to do and I don't want to work for a boss. And, you know, I always resented having a job when they told you when you were allowed to go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? You're not going to tell me when to eat lunch. I don't think so. <laughs> You're not going to tell me when I can take vacation. That's, that's because I've got three ones in my name. But I don't have a one in any of my pillar numbers, like my life path, my expression, et cetera. So, so you embody these characteristics. You yes. know, even, if you, even if you have just one or two or three numbers throughout your whole name, even if it's not your life path or your expression. Um, I have a, a number two, which is that humanitarian and the caring and the nurturing. And then I've got one four, which is that grounding and stability. So... I wanted to kind of express that to everybody. So as you look at your numbers, um, don't just only focus on the number that all of your numbers equal. Also really look at, you know, the numbers in your name and see how many, how many numbers of each do you have? So I've got seven fives, two threes, three ones. Oh, I forgot. I also have three nines. So nine is also the the caring and the nurturing, the humanitarian, the being involved in, in groups of people, right? Jeanette kind of being seen, like we were talking about Lisa Williams. She's a life path nine. So she's in the public eye. She's got books. She's got TV shows. She gets up on the stage, that kind of thing. I think John Edward is a life path nine too, you said. Yep. Yep. So, you know, so there's that humanitarian effort. So even though my life path is a six and my expression and heart's desire is a five. I still have that desire to do something humanitarian, that desire to do something very creative. So, you know, take a look at that in your own chart because um, all the numbers that lead up to the, the number that you added it to, they're very important because they're, they're, it's kind of like peppering that desire, you know what I mean, in you. It's like a characteristic. Um, does anybody want me to look at their name right now? Because I can tell you something just like I did with Jan. By just yeah. looking at and before you do, I just wanted to share this one other thing. So Jeanette, her, um, her life path is 11-2, correct? Yes. Okay. So I want to share with you guys a little story. My life path is a six. I'm a nurturer, you know, whatever, whatever. Jeanette's really a mother. I mean, she's married with kids, right? My life path six would tell me that I would be a good mother and all this kind of stuff, but because of all the fives in my name, I'm like, whoa, I've got control issues. I don't think I can do that just yet, right? So, so the thing is, is that her life path is 11-2, 
my maturity number is 11 too. So I came into my maturity number in my 30s when I was 32, I'm 37 now, and I'll continue to develop it into my 40s and 50s. This is the interesting connection here. The very first um, day I met Jeanette, we were at a mediumship event, okay? A mediumship weekend. And uh, it was like a four day, you know, mediumship event that, that we were doing. And so the very first day, everybody walks into this event and everybody's putting their name tags on and oh, hey, and oh, hey, and you know, doing all the pleasantries. And then we start the, the whole shebang. So what they did right off the bat was they, we got all these chairs and we put them in a big circle. So everybody sat down in a big circle and then, um, the, you know, the, the facilitator started leading the group. And then what we had to do was we had to go around the circle and introduce ourselves to the group and then just tell everybody why you were there. Right? So we're going around the group and all this stuff and we finally get to me and I was like, my name is Leanne and I'm from Ohio and why am I here? And I kind of looked, I looked at somebody that I knew across the thing. I was like, I don't know, Dia, why the hell am I here? Like, I was still trying to figure out why I was here. And, and I said, well, and I didn't know how to explain it because I was still very kind of new, like into the understanding of why I was even pushed into the spiritual stuff. And so I just didn't have my elevator speech. And I'm like, well, okay, I guess it kind of started when I was a kid and I was born knowing my mother was going to die and blah, blah, blah. So I just gave that nutshell version. Well, the thing about it is, is that this mediumship event that we were at actually took place on, on the four year anniversary of my mother's passing. So this was subconsciously, unconsciously, emotionally for me, you know, this whole anniversary thing, even though I wasn't even thinking about it because um, it had been four years and I thought it was over it. So all of a sudden I'm trying to explain why I'm there. And I just, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm getting emotional. And I started getting really embarrassed because there's like, what, 20 people in the room or something. And I'm like, I'm going to cry in front of a bunch of strangers. And I couldn't stop it. And it just came on me. And oh my God, and all this stuff about my mother. And I couldn't even speak. I was like choking on my tongue. Well, Jeanette is sitting there in the group, right? Does it, never even met me. I don't even think we said hello to each other yet because we were all kind of rushed into the room. Jeanette starts crying. She immediately, immediately connected to me from across the circle and she starts tearing up and totally like relating to me. Okay. And my story. And the interesting thing about that is, is because she is a life path 11 to, I am maturity 11 to. Okay. So she could instantly connect with my story and my reawakening and the trauma that I had been through with my mother, because Jeanette also had a very difficult childhood like I did. So we were instantly like, like this, moth to a flame. Plus I'm a life path six. She's already a mother. Do you see how this kind of stuff works? So little did we know that throughout that entire weekend, we would, I mean, eventually become friends. And I mean, I don't know, it didn't take us long to become friends. And the next thing you know, we've been like best friends ever since. Mm -hmm. But that's the whole point. We hadn't even exchanged pleasantries yet. And we were instantly energetically drawn to each other and connected. And it, and I really think that when you have that numerology thing, well, it, all the other elements too, but it's no coincidence. That's my whole point of the story is that Jeanette is a life path 11 two, and I'm a maturity 11 two. Yeah. So she instantly recognized me almost like soul to soul right away. Whereas, you know, I can't say that anybody else did. I mean, other people were moved by it. And again, I wasn't trying it just waterworks just happened. And that was that. So I thought that was very fascinating because now here we are collaborating in the, in the group and she's coming on to do numerology and you know, that's how we met. <laughs> that's how, that's how we originally met was at a mediumship event, but we didn't find out about our numbers until, you know, months and months and months later. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's one of those little revelations and epiphanies that you have when it's like, why do I feel connected to this person? I don't even know you. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and you know, numerology is just like astrology. It, you know, none of it is, um, is a coincidence. Everything is, you know, pre-written in the stars, so to speak. So I just wanted to share that. I hope I didn't bore you too much, but I thought it was fascinating. Because here I was coming into my maturity. You see what I mean? And Jeanette was already there. <laughs> she like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Jeanette was already there. So anyways, go
Go ahead. I think Terry had a question. Yeah, Terry, do you want to unmute yourself? Okay. I have a lat life path 11 and an expression 11. And uh, so, yeah. Very significant, Terry. Could you relate yeah. to having had a lot of struggle or challenge in your life? Yes. Okay, so I'm even getting goosebumps right now, just as I'm tuning into you, Terry. Um, just a moment, because I'm tuning into you on another level beyond numerology. I've been getting a hint the last 10 minutes myself. Yeah, so Terry, um, I'm getting a lot of goosebumps and I feel that you're already in connection with spirit. Are you willing, are you, do you, are you aware of this with yourself, that you're already in connection with spirit? No, no, I'm not. I'm not aware of it. <clears throat> okay. Yes, you are, Terry, because of your son-in-law, you remember? You no. felt oh, yes, that's true. That's true. after yes. he passed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel... Terry, and this isn't numerology speaking, but I'll speak to your numerology in a moment. This is my um, intuitive psychic ability tuning into you. You're already in connection with spirit, whether you're okay. aware of it or not. You're a direct channel, okay? And your life path and purpose directly involves not just the spiritual, but your psychic intuitive ability, okay? Um, you are so sensitive that I can tell that you can feel the energy in a room true true yes you feel like you have um your antenna is on a lot your psychic intuitive antenna true antenna true yes uh -huh. and yes. you're highly sensitive to animals to people to emotion and you need a lot of downtime in order to balance that true I do. I need time alone. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the numerology now. Okay. okay. Your numerology, the fact that you're 11 to um, life path number in expression is very, very significant. I've only had one other client that I've known the numerology with this. Okay. Your 11 to double whammy means that it's part of your nature to be highly sensitive, highly intuitive, I would say psychic. And to me, when I say intuitive, psychic, it's all kind of the same thing, right? But to me, it's not so much to predict people's future. It's that you tap into people's souls. You tap into their emotions. And the 11 to is considered the most sensitive and intuitive of the numbers. It can be both a blessing and a curse. Because you're so sensitive, Anybody that has 11 or even two, okay, you got two in your charts, your names, whatever. You really need to have grounding. You need to be able to release energy from other people because you're so sensitive. The sensitivity is for the compassion, the empathy, and the intuition. But you also need to have ways that you balance that. So... Are you exploring your intuitive abilities at all, Terry? No, I mean, I've, I've, I've had intuitive hits over the years, but I, it's more that it comes to me than trying to bring it to me. Um, what happens to me, Terry, is when I tune into some people, spirit starts connecting with me and I start to get kind of like, I can physically feel it. I can physically feel spirit as I'm speaking to you. So are you aware of your communication with your guides? No, I'm not, not really. So um, it's more than we can go into in this you know, time frame, but you have a direct connection. It's about understanding that and what you choose to do with it. But um, it, it's part of your life path and purpose, for sure. It's there, it's probably been there from day one and you, mm -hmm. you if you look back at your life, you can see it. The 11 is about healing, sensitivity, caring, but having that direct channel to spirit. I believe, personally, we are all met and we all have a direct channel to spirit. Who cares whether or not you have a master number in your chart? This is all of our evolving purposes is to have that channel to spirit. Like Rianne said, she's connected, she gets guidance. My personal belief is we are all we all have it. It's just an understanding of how to do that and how to work that into our lives. As I connect into your energy, I feel like, ooh, 
if spirit is trying to knock on your door and get you to open up more. Okay, because I'm like, ooh, and I know when I feel that spirit, I'm like, I feel it. So um, you did? Did I just hear Leanne say you have a son that's passed? Is that what I heard her I say? My son-in-law passed away three years ago. And that's what she was referencing? Yes, uh-huh. Because I felt him. I, yeah. I felt him around me. So we can't, like, you know, go on to mediumship and all of that. But I know spirits here with me, and I know they're tr they, your spirit team, is trying to get your attention. Um, it's up to you whether you want to talk with me more or Leanne or someone else. It's up to you. But there's a lot more to talk about with that 11-2, okay? Okay. 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 Yeah, pay, thank you. Pay attention to your intuition. It is not your imagination. And I can tell that spirit is knocking on your door saying, I want to get your attention, do something with this. And it's up okay. to you what you will do with it, okay? Okay. It's not to be scared of. It will no, I'm not. It, yeah, and I'm not. I, I'm not scared of it. I would, I would really uh, like to um, make it more so. I would love to have the intuition and have more of a conversation with spirit. So yes, I will be content. It's there. I know it. I feel it. I feel it and I can see it in your numerology both. Okay. Okay. Are you, are you about to cry, Terry? Yes. I, okay. Yeah. okay, because let me just say for the last 10 minutes of, of Jeanette's lecture, even, even before my, even before my story, I'm sitting here yeah. and I'm just listening to her, you know, finish up. And for like the last 10 minutes, I have felt my eyes wanting to tear up. So I'm looking around at everybody because I'm thinking somebody is going through something because somebody, I, I feel overwhelming emotion, like I want to cry and I've not been in a bad mood all day, but my eyes literally have been sitting here wanting to tear. So I was going to ask, some, I was going to ask everybody when Jeanette was done, just because I kept getting that hit. Well, as she said, I'm extremely sensitive. I yeah. cry at over everything. Okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. so that's so, yeah, why you were tearing up was just because yeah. of that. So maybe my hit was somebody else. Okay. And Terry, I can totally relate because of my life path being eleven two. Okay. But yeah. yeah. But yeah, you're, it's, you're, it's, you're it's sitting on a lot of um, you're sitting a lot of potential and power within you that needs to come out. Okay. Okay. I can feel it. And Leanne's nodding her head. She can too. It's just like, it needs to come out of you because your um, purpose is unfolding in, a, in another bigger way. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Terry. Thanks. Leanne, I'll ch check in with you uh, regarding what you want to do next. Does anybody have any other questions? Peter, you can be quiet over there. You got anything to say? <laughs> I like to include everybody. Yes, no, maybe so. Just shake your head if you don't if you don't want to talk. That's fine. I just want to give everybody a chance. Um, Deb, I I don't I I don't know if she's even with us, but um, oh Jan Jan asked a question in the chat box. She said, "So you two wouldn't have been close before you reached the maturity level?" Question mark. Um. I wouldn't say that necessarily. I knowing Leanne, but what I think it is is I think it's kind of destiny pulling us together, the right time, the right place. Yeah. So it's probably more likely we wouldn't have met before that point. Yeah, probably. Um, I, I definitely believe that that whole mediumship event that we were at it was divinely guided. I so. think we've had past lives together. We haven't really discussed this, but. Um, I'm obviously Asian. I've had a fascination with England. I was an English major. I've never been. I know I'll go someday. I've been told by other psychics I've had multiple past lives in the UK. Um, my husband's half, his, his ancestors are half British. Um, they came over from England, his grandparents, on one, his great grandparents on one side. I'm sure we've spent past life. There's a soul connection. Yeah. There is. Yeah, we're soul sisters. I'm going to have a past life regression done and I'll let you know. I'll let you know if you pop up in one of my memories, <laughs> for sure. Um, does anybody else, I think Darlene raised her hand again. Did you raise your hand? Yeah, because I just, I have a life path number 11, and yeah. it's number two. 
Okay. We have a lot of light workers among us. Everybody, you're light workers. Yes, and I'm not surprised, Leanne, because to go to this depth of numerology means you want to know yourself and you want to know the people in your life. So, Darlene, you said you have an 11 life path and a two expression. Yes. And what did you figure your heart's desire number was? Eight. Eight. Okay, just like Terry, that makes you highly sensitive and um, highly intuitive. So Darlene, have you noticed that with yourself, intuitive psychic ability? I've had some experiences. I, I talked to Leanne about it. A little I see ago. you're giving readings. I have to interrupt, I'm sorry. I see the vision because I'm highly clairvoyant. I see you giving readings, Darlene. Is this something that you have thought about doing, is eventually doing readings with people? No. I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing you, I'm seeing visions already. Uh, what happens, because I'm uh, like Leanne, I've had this intuitive ability a long time, I've been doing readings much longer than I've been doing numerology, is I, I start tapping into you intuitively. I already am seeing visions of you doing readings and working with people. Whether you choose to do that or not, I already feel that you have this ability. Do you recognize that within yourself? Because you said you started to talk about Leanne before I interrupted you. But well, I, just I, it out. I spoke to Leanne about it. I have had some strange experiences, yes. Your, your 11 and 2 together tells me that you are here to help others. And there's some kind of intuitive and healing capacity. Okay, you're highly intuitive. Your eighth desire gives you that practicality you need to actually, for instance, if you wanted to turn this into your work or a side thing that you did for work, that tap into that eight energy of practicality, of success. The eight is very much the leader, is very good and you would be very good at having your own business with that eight heart's desire. And it would fulfill you more because the eight needs to do its own thing. But the eight's very practical and grounded and knows how, if it taps into it, can manage money, can build a business, can do, do the necessary things to do that, okay? Um, but, the, but you have so much sensitivity in, in you. It needs to be channeled in a way, like when I said with Terry, you need balance, you need meditation, you need nature. You need to get away from people sometimes because like Terry, you're you're just taking everything in and you can yes. take it too much. I am very impacted by this. Mm -hmm. I absorb everybody's. So take your sea salt baths, do your meditation. I love that you have a candle in the background. Do those self-nurturing things. Anybody that's got a lot of salt lamp. Oh, is it a salt lamp? Well, the salt lamp, anybody that's got these sensitive numbers, and I bet everybody on this call does, you need to have good self-care. Because light workers are here to help improve and, and uplift humanity. And we're also connected to the light. What is the light? Light is spirit. We see the light in other people. We see the spirit in other people. But we need to have boundaries. We need to have good self-care, right? Thank you. You're welcome, Darlene. Darlene, do you remember when we were talking the other weekend and I told you that you've got it, it's just lying dormant and undeveloped in you? You did, after I told you about all my weirdness. Yep. And your daughter, I, I'm curious, did Bailey, do, what, what are her numbers? Bailey's, oh, she took her book. She wrote them down. Okay. But I, I really, I don't know what they were. Oh, that's all right. I, 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 I would be, email them to me because I'd be interested just to see. Yeah, I know she has, she has abilities. Well, I know because I told her she's a medium. I'm telling you. <laughs> I swear to God. And I told you that if, if, if you're not going to pop out a medium for a kid if you don't have ability yourself because you got to be connected. That's my belief anyway. Darlene, I have two children that have my same life path number and they um, have, they have ability as well. Even, and it was fascinating because I was adopted and I never knew, you know, and um, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Teresa raised her hand. Did you have another question? Well, 
Yeah, so when we were talking earlier about my name, about being adopted, so the first time I did this, I added up the numbers, and um, yeah. when I first got on the call, I was rushing to get on the call because I was kind of late, <laughs> yeah. and I was starving, and so I added up the numbers, and I didn't add up the numbers correctly, okay. so I came up with certain numbers, and I was like, well, that doesn't sound like me, and so I went back, and I re-added up the numbers, and um, yeah, so I did it incorrectly, so um, like you said, I added up the numbers for my birth name and then the numbers for my adopted name. So I came up for the expression number. It could be either for my birth name would be a nine and then for my um, adopted name would be uh, expression number of 11. That's significant, okay. And what about, what is your life path number, Teresa? Life path is one. And what about your heart's desire number? What did you get? That, that's a three, and I'm really happy about that because I'm looking forward to having more fun. <laughs> Is it a three for both names? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think I just did it for the, um, I didn't do it for both names. I think I just did it for the, the my birth name. Um, one, I'm gonna, I just, hello people. We have a lot of 11s in this group. <laughs> We're sure do. We yeah. could be like the Care Bears. You guys remember the Care Bear cartoon? I, I wanted to like. I want to do another call or something. I know. Like, we all have emblems on like this. <laughs> want to light up. Chart. I want to do a <laughs> charts. I'm so excited because this is so significant. It's yeah. like it's kind of the payoff, people, for having these difficult challenges. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the payoff for getting to be. <laughs> Light, light workers that feel like we're like the black sheep in our family or the like people that don't fit in or like all the stuff that we have to deal with. I'm like, it's the payoff because it's, it's lovely to have these numbers. They've been challenging, but it's also really lovely because um, the fact that you have an 11 to expression, Teresa is very significant. The fact that you have a nine expression is very significant. And the fact that, that one is a birth name and one is adopted, it doesn't matter, okay? They're both old school numbers. They're both highly intuitive. You've heard what I've already said about the 11 to, to, um, to um, oh, I've lost your name, Terry and Darlene. Yes. Okay, the life path one, you've heard what I've said about that, but the influence of the nine and the 11 to, humanitarian the 11 2 it's the intuition it's the psychic ability it's the direct connection to spirit okay so what you do in your life in terms of the expression you need to be able to reach larger groups of people the master numbers the eights and the nines and the charts tell me you need to reach larger groups of people okay larger groups okay <laughs> which tells me that you're in a transition point your right. soul is calling you to go bigger yeah i am and i'm and trying I'm, to decide what i want to do by your face that you know it yes yeah. smile is is wonderful because it it means you're already feeling that pull mm -hmm. i am yes oh definitely i'm i, I know that i'm in a, a, a huge transition it's 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 tremendous. <laughs> I see speaking with you. Have you noticed that you have speaking ability? No, I've never thought that in my life. <laughs> because I'm very shy. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm not around one or individual one on one. But in a group, I'm in front of people. I'm, I'm pretty shy. I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert too. But I'm going to I'm going to bet that when you talk about something that you're passionate about, when you're teaching or uplifting someone, that's different. Okay. I would never do what my husband does. He's a high school principal. Okay. He um, can spontaneously speak in front of a lot of people. I'm not good at that. But if I can speak in front of people about something that's around spirituality or intuition or soul or purpose, mm -hmm. and I, and I bet that if you were to speak in front of a, a circle of women about self-empowerment, about listening to your intuition, then you'd be able to do it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. 
It it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of confidence because the 11s, the 22s, the ones, it's confidence. The, the one is the leader, but the one has had to a lot of times have to go it alone. So the one has to learn to develop confidence. It doubts itself a lot. Mm -hmm. Look at the 11. 11 is double one. 11 is leadership, but it's also self-doubt. So when we heal the self-doubt, when we work through the self-doubt, then the leader comes out. Well, I've had my own business since 2005 as a recruiter, but I know that that's not what I'm called to do any longer. I know that it's something else. Yeah. And I can tell looking at your expression numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I know that it's somehow spiritually related. I, just looking at your numbers, I can tell that it is. That 11-2 number is very significant because it's spiritual. It's higher consciousness. It's the spiritual messenger. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like I've just been feeling extremely spiritual. Uh, it, it just all started happening, I guess, uh, when my brother passed away. It just like the floodgates opened or something for me. So. It's an awakening. It's an awakening. And a lot of times awakenings or um, dark night of the souls or any yeah. of that stuff, they can be awakenings. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. So I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I just feel it coming. So you know, if you start, do you meditate at all? I do. Yes. Well, uh, that's good. Keep it up. If you meditate every day, okay. And, you know, sit quietly, sit, sit, um, I, I like to call it in the power, you know, Jeanette and I were talking about this, it's terminology, yeah. but sitting, sitting in the power of your own self, sitting quietly and, and connecting with your own soul, yeah. um, you know, sitting quietly. And then after a while of meditation, you know, asking, asking questions to spirit, open-ended questions. What am I supposed to be doing? You know, don't yeah. say, what am I supposed to be doing in spirituality or something very pointed because it closes the door. But if you ask a very broad question and you clear your mind and you let it come in and start mm -hmm. writing down the first things that come into your mind, they, they will tell you. Yeah. They'll start to tell you and it'll help to kind of align it for you. Um, you know, and other than that, um, you know, if you just don't feel like you're getting the guidance, then absolutely highly recommend having your new, your in-depth numerology chart done. Get yeah. your birth chart done because then you can compare the two as right. well. And that will give you some some insight about, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. But, you know, when you first start kind of going through the spiritual awakening, it's going to be very fuzzy. Because when I first went through mine, I, I had no idea what was going on. I thought I was losing my damn mind. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I didn't. I, it, at the time when it happened for me, I always knew that I had the mediumship ability, but I never, ever, ever in a million years thought that I would be developing it, focusing on it, whatever. What I wanted to do, my dream was I wanted to be like the next Stephen King or something, JK Rowling, have the next big novel, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But, um, but you know, that it just, that wasn't what was meant to be. I was supposed to go through the spiritual stuff first before I even, you know, consider that. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, if you're definitely feeling called, if you're if you've been you know doing your business and recruiting or whatever, I mean, I can just tell already that that's like nails on a chalkboard. That's just what oh. I feel when I hear you say that. I'm like, no, that's oh. all wrong for you. Oh all no, it is. It is. Yeah. It's it's too rigid. It's not creative enough. Right. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, keep doing what you need to do because you got to eat. But um, right. in the meantime, spend the time really, really meditating and you know and and. and and don't, um, don't allow meditation to distract you. You don't have to sit there with music if you don't want to or whatever. I mean, really get quiet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Allow yourself to just drift off into that place and you'll, yeah. be, you'll be amazed at the inspiration that starts to come in for you. Yeah. Also pay attention to your dreams because they will, they will give you messages in your dreams. I would suggest putting a journal next to your bed. When you wake up in the morning, if you had any kind of vivid dream, lucid dream, weird dream, even if it didn't make sense, yeah. Down because you'll you'll forget it as the day goes on. Yeah. So start keeping a dream journal that will open it up for you as well. And then um, and then the more that you kind of align yourself and become more in tune, you're going to start having signs and synchronicities on your path. Yeah. Like you could be standing at the cafe looking up at one of those like chalkboard menus. You know, if you ever been to a cafe where they write everything on chalk, yeah. and you know you'll see something written on the menu, 
and, you know, and all of a sudden one little word or, or phrase pops out at you and you're just like, huh, don't brush that off. You know what I mean? Or you're driving down the street and you see a delivery truck with, you know, I don't know, some emblem on the side that really strikes you. It's little things like that because spirit is going to be trying to get your, get your attention in that way to try to point you in the direction you're supposed to be going in. Those things are signs. They're all signs. And then anything that you have an interest in, like I've always had an interest in the other side and, you know, death and the soul and this and that. I just didn't know that it was going to manifest, you know, into mediumship for me. I thought maybe I'd be a ghost hunter or something, you know? Yeah. No, that's all wrong. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. But if you yeah. kind of start paying attention to those, those, um, the, the interest that you have, and I'm talking about interest that you have when nobody's looking, interest mm -hmm. that you have that you don't get paid for, that you don't mm -hmm. have to perform for, what you are interested in in your downtime, in your alone time, what you're naturally drawn to. And then start mm -hmm. making a list of that because those are the things that we often overlook and those are the very things that we're supposed to be developing. So like for me, one of my big things my whole life was I love spending a lot of quiet time alone. I love writing in my journal. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I never thought that that would be something that I would develop or do or, you know, create a name with or whatever. I just thought that I needed to do that because, you know, I was broken and bruised and I had to bleed my heart out onto the page. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. that was one little thing that was meant to kind of grow and blossom and manifest in, into what I'm, what I'm doing today. So it's interesting. I mean, that's a good example for everybody. Anything that you're interested in, no matter what it is. Yeah. And then you can start kind of making a list and checking it twice and, and, and then lean into it. Because at first, you're going to have a lot of interests. Like when I first was reawakening, I was like, well, I like gardening and I like health and I like blogging and I like dogs and I like this and that. It's like, well, which one should I do? Which one should I do? You know? yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's not until you kind of make the list and then you sit down and you lean into it. Do I want to have a career with dogs? No, I just want to love one. Do I really want to have a garden or open a greenhouse? No, that's too much work. You lean into it and see how it feels for you. And then the one that feels right or feels like, you know, that comfy pair of sweatpants that you put on. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, that feels good. That's what I'm supposed to be focusing on or the area I'm supposed to move into. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, I, I, almost every, not every day, but three or four days a week, I found this um, resource. It's like a, that uh, this guy, he puts on these spiritual webinars. They're all guest speakers and they, they all have an offering, a paid offering, but for the, for an hour and a half, two hours, it's a free, spiritual webinar and there's a presenter so um you know i i they're from all over the world so it's i'm listening to that that like three or four days a week so Great. i'm always doing these spiritual things there that's very good and then i hope that you're taking notes anything that one yeah. of the presenters says that pings you mm -hmm. write it down yeah i've probably gone through about 10 of these good good <laughs> good good that's really yeah. gonna help you it's really gonna help you on, on your path yeah yeah. The other thing I want to say to everybody is, you know, the, um, you know, my testament to having your numerology chart done, obviously it's, it's, it's a wonderful tool. It's very, not only is it fascinating, but it brings in a lot of clarity. Um, but, um, if you're at a crossroads in your life on anything, um, it can help you make a decision. I'll give you my example. I've always wanted to write a book, right? I've always wanted to be an author. That's not what I went to college for because in the 3D world, mom and dad said, you got to pick a profession that you're going to be able to get a paycheck in. And to be a writer, that's a pipe dream to get published. Like, you're not going to be the next Stephen King, right? So you better, you know, find something else to do in the meantime. So I became a teacher. But I always wanted to write. But I never got to it, right? And I'm, I dabble it in my downtime. But again, we got to work. We got to eat. So... The whole thing with that was, um, I don't like, I don't even like horror, but I love Stephen King because he's a fabulous writer. But <laughs> my genre when I was younger was romance. I loved all the love stories and the forbidden love and the hot, sexy scenes and whatever. Yeah. But as I came into my awakening, then I was starting to kind of be pulled into, well, if you're going to do fictional writing of any kind, it needs to be something in the spiritual realm, something fantasy and fiction and otherworldly and like Harry Potter. Then I really got into this like this crossroads, like, should I be writing romance or should I be writing Harry Potter type stuff? And I couldn't decide because I was stuck between this, this crossroads and I was really being pulled into the, 
the spiritual stuff, but I've always loved the romance stuff. And I wanted to be careful which one I chose because as, as a writer, you got to be careful what you put your name on. Whatever genre you come out in is what you're going to be slapped with for the rest of your life. Okay. So I didn't, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to be known as a romance writer. Well, I had my numerology charts on long story short with Jeanette. And I asked her, you know, I'm at this real crossroads about this. If I do explore writing, I've got two different genres that I'm really interested in, but I don't know which one to put my name on. Just looking at my numerology, she said, yes, Leanne, you could write romance and you could probably be successful at it, but it might be a flash in the pan. It might be short lived and you really wouldn't be that fulfilled in it because if you do any fictional writing, you are supposed to be in the spiritual realm because of your 11 to maturity number, because of all these other numbers in your chart. And she went really in depth with, with it, telling me the mediumistic ability and all this kind of stuff. That's what you're supposed to be known for in this life. Well, then I looked at my birth chart. This is where the birth chart comes into play. Do you know why I had the interest in writing romance novels? Because my south node, which is your past life, okay? My south node was in Aquarius in the fifth house of love affairs oh. and creativity. My past life was probably something with a lot of lovers or something. I mean, who knows? Maybe I was a man who spread my seed everywhere and had babies or something. Or maybe I was like a whore in a brothel in England in the 17th century. I don't really know. But that's where my south node was. That's your past life. And in this life, wherever your south node is in your birth chart is not what you're supposed to be focusing on because you already lived that. You're supposed to be going towards your destiny which in your astrology chart is your north node, which in numerology is your life path number, your expression number, your maturity number. Is there a destiny number, by the way? It's the same. Well, some will, it's interchangeable. Some people call it the expression or destiny. You really, in numerology, you have to look at life path, expression, heart's desire, and maturity. That's why I spoke about all of those today. Yes. The maturity shows that secondary life theme. The expression is how do you individually take your life path? So interestingly, my children also are 11 too, both of my children. But my daughter's expression is three. My son's expression is five. My expression is seven. My son is very outgoing. He's an extrovert. He has he just moved last year. He has a ton of friends. He's very charismatic, okay? He is um, got some Leo in his chart, but it's taking a different flavor. Just like you can look at three Leos and they'll be very different, right? So you've got to look at the bigger picture of all of it. And the maturity is where am I headed? Yes. Where am I headed with all of it? That's why the maturity number is the life path plus the expression added together. Where are you going? My maturity is a mind. I'm headed towards reaching more people, helping uplift and inspire with my life path number, using my intuitive ability with the 11 and the 7, but being the humanitarian and giving and reaching more people. Yes. Okay. Just like Jan is, is going and using her spirituality and a psychic ability with her writing, with her, I'm going to say, teaching Leanne. With her teaching, with her speaking, with her videos, and all the things that she's doing and going to do. Okay. And so that's why I was telling you guys that story because I already knew that my south node was in that area of my chart. But it was confusing to me, and I didn't have that clarity about it until I got my numerology chart done with Jeanette that told me, yes, you're not supposed to be writing about that. If you do any writing, it's going to be in the spiritual realm. So if it's fiction, then it's going to be fantasy, you know, like Harry Potter type stuff. Or if I do nonfiction, then I will be writing about spirituality. So nonfiction, like self-help, spiritual, you know, whatever, channeled messages, all kinds of books. You know how the, the spiritual people do it. So, but, but that's why I wanted to explain that to you because it was, it was really helpful to me during a, a very like crossroads time in my life where I'm like, I don't know, you know, which one to, to make a decision on. And it was the numerology that really helped me see what it is I'm supposed to be focused on and what I'm not supposed to be doing. So every time I have, um, it seems lately anyway, every time I have a reading with somebody, 
most of them, the majority of them, I'm telling them, go get your numerology chart done, you know, and not, not just because just to do it, but because literally they have questions or something during the reading that, that the numerology would be able to answer. And so I'm always guiding people, go get it done because it's going to answer those questions. So for you, uh, Teresa, now that you are kind of going through this transition, you know, I mean, no pressure. It's, it's totally up to you, but it, it, it can really help because I was confused myself and Jeanette really, like, it's like, you know, ha! Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Cool. Does anybody else have any other questions or anything? Or Annette, okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Nice um, seeing you. I got a new phone. Nice seeing you too. Okay, my life path is a seven. My expression is a five. But my name, the, for my first name, Annette, has four fives in it. So I feel like five's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And my heart's desire is a one. So what could you tell me? The one, the five, and the seven are very mental, analytical numbers. You're probably highly intelligent. Okay, I'm going to just speak to the numbers. The five is got that verbal ability. I wouldn't be surprised if you have writing in you, because I just already tuning in. Do you feel writing? Do you have writing in you, Annette? Well, I, I've never really pursued it. I've I've wanted to try my hand at writing books. I love books. Um, your eyes are lighting up and your face just smiled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I've been talking, I've had such a change in my life in the past five years, especially this past year. And one of the things I keep saying is, you know, I think maybe I'd like to write, and it's actually a book about one of my ancestors that I, I'm related to back in the 1300s. I was able to, you know, my family tree goes back really far and there's one particular woman who just fascinates me and I just think, I would love to write her story. Be, I was about ready to say, Annette, you'd be very gifted at historical fiction. Okay. Okay. So the fact that you have the five expression, writer, okay, just like Leanne. Also, the fact that you have several fives in your name, in numerology, that's called your intensity number. Or hidden, okay. passion, hidden passion is another word for it. That's the number that appears most often. I have a lot of fives in my name. That I was an English major, okay? I did a lot of writing to get my psychology degree. So writing tends to writing, languages, speaking. People with a lot of fives, that tends to come to you more naturally. My husband's a life path five. His expression is a three. He's got the double whammy of the verbal ability. He was an English major. He went to graduate school for English. He was an English teacher. He does a ton of speaking as a school principal. What is his hobby? He loves to write fiction. Ah. Okay. The seven is going to give you that patience to really go into that, that um, history. Okay. And the details and the depth of it. And the five is going to make it come alive for people. Okay, I love research. Yes, so. I'm not surprised because the seven life path loves to research. Okay. And what are you supposed to do with the research and the knowledge and the wisdom? You need to get it out of you and share it with people. Okay. It's pretty awesome. It is. It's funny because, I mean, I've never actually pursued that path. I'm a painter and I, you know, that's how I express myself, I guess. So this will be something new. The five expression likes to do multiple things. It's often mostly talented. Okay. Okay. So my husband also is good at like um, illustration and drawing. He, he likes to write kids stories and he likes to draw them. So the five likes to do multiple things. What I say to people who have five in their charts, choose a couple. Okay. You can have all the hobbies you want, but when it comes to your career, choose a couple. Don't, you don't want to be the jack of all trades, master of none. Right? Okay. So if you want to, you know, do all the other, do it, but pick a couple so that you can feel fulfilled, right? And that one heart's desires, you have a one heart desire, right? Yes. Okay. You're going to want to be good at what you do. 
So, um, but more than anything, even other than the numerology, follow your calling, follow what's, you smiled, you just said you've been thinking of writing, do it. Okay. The numerology is just validating what you've already been feeling. Okay. okay. Yeah, you know why you're feeling that way, and that is because your soul is talking to you. Yes. Your soul is pulling yes. you in that direction. Numerology okay. is about your soul's potential, your soul's gifts, talents. Think of okay. numerology as your soul's path, your soul's blueprint. That's what numerology should be. Numerology subtitled, my soul's blueprint. Yep. I feel like I'm on a whole new path of, uh, and spirituality is a big part of it, especially yep. this past year. Yep. It's like my eyes have finally opened and that's it, what happens like to the seven. Mm -hmm. When the seven <laughs> forms, it is not only intelligent, it connects to a higher intelligence. It connects to spirit. Okay. That's the higher vibration of the seven. Deepak Chopra is a well-known seven life path. He is a doctor and he started out in medicine but his chopra center is all about meditation and spirituality and right i didn't right. know that's, that's interesting i didn't know that about him yeah i have one more question my son actually ashton his life path is a 33 what does that mean you know all i ever see you know that's just a master number and oh there's so few people, but so yeah. what does that mean? So the life path numbers all have kind of a, a nickname. 11-2 is like spiritual messenger. 22-4 is master builder. 33-6 is master healer. Okay. All of the qualities of the six heightened with the master number, Christ consciousness. That's why it's wow. not very often seen. It is selflessness. It is compassion. It's unconditional love. So it's not just like personal relationship and family and friends. It's about all the master numbers are here to uplift humanity, reach and inspire larger groups of people. Okay. It's here to make a difference. So 33.6 is going to do it in a loving, caring, kind way, but it's going to do, just like in astrology, the higher vibration of the Pisces, right, is God consciousness, Christ consciousness. That's the 33.6. Okay. okay. It's funny because he's the one who's sort of brought all the spiritualism into the house and has brought all of this into our lives. It's, it's amazing. All of the master numbers are highly intuitive and highly sensitive. Okay. He's also likely to have some kind of creative ability. They're all very creative. The six brings, there's probably some kind of musical or artistic ability. And that's true too. Okay. Not that he has expressed yet, but he's only 25. So. <laughs> something, something, right? Yeah. But that's what that is. It's very significant. So no wonder he's brought all of this to you. Because he's a Okay. Yeah, he's definitely brought it. So that's interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Stephanie raised her hand. Can I, um, just because we're going a little bit longer and I hate yeah. to do this, but can I take a quick bathroom break because we've been going for a little bit and come back and answer Stephanie's question. Sure. Stephanie, are you still there? Do you, do you still have a question to ask? Uh, yes, but I'm totally okay with taking, let her take a break. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've had so much to drink. I'll be right back. Okay. Anybody else who needs to feel free. I, I, I'm going to wait because I figure we're almost done. So, um, so how's everybody liking this so far? This is pretty pretty interesting, isn't it? Yep, it's head. very interesting. Good. Liam. Yep. What do you have planned next? 
for the next call? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We don't. You mean for numerology or astrology? <laughs> Either. I didn't know if you were working on uh, your next, the next call or not. Yeah, um, Jeanette and I, we were going to talk about the next call. As far as astrology goes, um, uh, Lorraine is taking a bit of a break right now because she had surgery. And um, so she just needs some time to heal or whatever. So I don't, I don't want to push her um, on that. So um, that I'm not sure of. And then the next okay. numerology call, her and I will discuss that soon. And then... Um, and then beyond that, you know, I've, I've been thinking about more stuff to do because I know it, it's been slow to go. And coming into the spring, I had said that I wanted to kind of ramp up the, um, the, uh, the group. But what I'm trying to do right now is finish off the readings that I had that came in. And so I've got that last batch for next week. And, um, and, then, and then I'll have more time, you know, to play in the group. So, yeah. So right, technically right now we don't have anything – a date scheduled. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. So Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a video. Up. Sorry. Hold on. That's okay. Sorry. Oh. There it is. Oh, Hi. Hi. <laughs> My question is: I feel like my expression number is seven, eight, and nine. Um. Okay. I know it come up as seven, but it feels uh -huh. like it's all three. Well, <clears throat> you may very likely have those numbers in your chart elsewhere, but your expression is seven? Yes. Okay. Well, here, you already have, just looking at your name, you have an eight with that H in your first name, but you probably have these somewhere else in your chart. So like what I said today at the beginning of this call, pay attention to your birthday. Um, you look at all the letters in your name because you're likely going to have several numbers <clears throat> in your chart. Um, that's why. Okay. If you feel like you have the nine, there's a humanitarian in you. If you feel like you have an eight, there's a leader in you. Okay. So that's what I would say is it's likely if we look at your bigger chart, you're going to have the influence of those numbers too. Oh, definitely being an Aquarius, a humanitarian, yes. definitely there. <laughs> yes. So, so don't just limit yourself. Like, if you feel that, you have it, whether it's actually in your chart or not. With numerology, take what fits you and leave the rest, kind of a thing, right? If with any of this stuff, it's not meant to be black and white. It's meant for you to touch into your own guidance, your own intuition, and let it be a guide, but don't let it be like a rule. Does that make sense? So I can use all of it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm launching my business and I feel like I have to be something specific and it doesn't feel right to be just one thing. <laughs> probably got some five in your chart <laughs> a lot <laughs> your first vowel in your name e is a five yeah so that's another thing we'll talk about when your first vowel is a five like Jeanette like Leanne like anybody else here Teresa Terry Deb you need to have freedom you need to be able to have choice in your work you're going to want to be able to have freedom or versatility or variety Okay. You may like travel or new experiences or adventure. So that first vowel of your name tells me, I don't want to get stuck doing one thing. Definitely. You can tell <laughs> just by looking at your first name. Okay. Because I totally want to include everything I've learned over the years yep. into what I want to do. Yep. I'm not surprised. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want to be one thing. I want to be a magician. <laughs> then do what do what you feel called to do. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns, stories you want to share, whatever? Crickets. Well, then in that case, it's 
646 Eastern time. So we've been on the call for two hours and 45 minutes about. Well, no, we started about 415, didn't we? So two hours-ish, two hours and some change. That's pretty good. I hope that everybody's enjoyed this. And um, it'll definitely be informative for the people who, Darlene's giving me a thumbs up, definitely be informative for the people who watch the, re the replay, you know, because you went through all the technical stuff first so they can, you know, calculate their mm -hmm. information. Yeah. So, um, well, then I guess, I guess we'll end here. I, I thank you everybody for joining us and I hope that you really enjoyed it. And again, I put, um, I put Jeanette's email address in the chat box below. If you want to copy and paste that, if you ever want to get your chart done, um, and if not, you know, you can just, you can find her in the, in the Facebook group too. So you just click on her name or whatever and send her a message and get in touch. Um, and if not, that's fine too. We're going to do more numerology calls coming up. Um, we're going to be diving deeper into some more numbers that kind of build on the previous numbers. So it's going to be fun and fascinating. Right, Jeanette? Well, I like it. I don't know if I'm going to go through as much as I do, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it becomes fun when I actually start to work with people. Otherwise, yeah. it's, it's, what's the point of it? I right. find it really fun when you actually work with real people. That's when it becomes yeah. fun. Because yeah. you get a lot of light bulb moments, I'm sure. Yes, I've been studying and fascinated by people for many, many years. And then the numerology, I'll just sit there sometimes if I know a celebrity's birthday and I'll calculate it or I'm bored I can look I can be like look at the first letter of their name the first vowel or but it's not just curiosity it really helps you understand yourself and other people better I mean we can talk about relationships that would be a fascinating one to talk about numerology and relationships whether it's a partner or it's your friends your children your co-workers that's another aspect of numerology that's really fascinating we could have a call on that couldn't we yeah We'll have to write that down. Many years ago, I got trained by another intuitive, um, but I changed it because I, it didn't go enough depth. But she taught us to do, to look at life path um, for career. And she taught us to look at numerology, life path in relationship. And then the third one I took was, um, med we would call it mediumship. She called it brief intuitive coaching, a combination of mediumship and, and um, numerology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Plenty, plenty to dive into. Yep. We'll definitely be having more, more calls coming up. Um, like I was, uh, I don't know if everybody heard, I was telling Terry, um, as far as astrology goes, uh, Lorraine is taking some time off because she had surgery. So I don't know if we're going to have any astrology stuff in the near future. Um, so I'm going to chat with her about that. I don't know if she wants me to find someone else to, to come in and kind of take over for a little while or whatever, but Hopefully we can get back on track with that because that's fun too. And then, um, and who knows what else we'll develop. I'm just going to let spirit guide me <laughs> and we'll see what else comes up in the group. But um, yeah. So if nobody else has any other, uh, you know, questions or comments, I think we'll end here. And Jeanette, do you want to stay on for a quick minute with me? Okay. And then, um, Thank you, everyone. This has been fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to uploading the um, to uploading the recording. And then, um, Terry, I'll be in touch with you. Annette, I'll see you this week. Um, Darlene, I'll respond to your email. And everybody else, we'll see you in the group. All right? Bye, guys. Thanks, Thanks so much. guys. Have a great day. And we'll just let everyone kind of X out. Terry's like, where is it? Where's the, <laughs> I saw her face. I think I can manually do it. Hang on. Remove Deb. There we go. Some of them, I'm, I'll just remove you manually. Just remove you manually. I keep pressing stop video. That's all right, Terry. I'll remove you. Okay. Okay. There we go. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna hit stop record because if I don't, I won't remove.